name is Superman, which gets me excited if it's the real <laughs> Superman. <laughs> Superman 99. Okay, here we are. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the community forum uh, that has been put together by Man Casting. Uh, here, welcome to the screen, Stephen Mann. Oh boy! Hi, everybody. <laughs> Uh, um, Stephen, yeah. can I just say one thing? Uh, I'm noticing a lot of people in the audience right now uh, mm -hmm. have their chat set to panelists and host. You need to change that and change the setting to everyone so that we can all see your chat. Please change your chat to everyone so we can all share together. That's it. Thanks so much. How do I, how do, I do that? Okay. So if oh, you Oh, I see. I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah, if you open the chat function, you'll see the little blue bubble that says hosts and panelists. You click on that and it'll give you the option for everyone. Um, Kelly Fanson is in the waiting room. She should be in here as well if we can bring Kelly in. You got it. Okay, so um, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, before we begin, um, I just wanna say a few words. I wanna thank you. I want to uh, to mention that you know it's been a, Obviously we can acknowledge it's been a really difficult three years. We've all gone through a lot. And three years ago, uh, when the pandemic started, we were doing some of these forums, which I think are important to communicate openly uh, and honestly and share thoughts and ideas. I think our processes as individuals, as actors and agents and casting has changed substantially over the past three years. And I wanna discuss what we're liking, what we're not liking, what we are finding challenging, and what maybe we can do better together. I want us to have a better understanding of how the job of an agent has changed, how the job of an actor has changed, and how the job of casting has changed. I want a really kind, open dialogue, and I want to share thoughts and feelings, and I just want to kick it with y'all, and uh, does everybody have a glass of wine or something nice and fancy to drink? Because one of the things that hasn't changed since the pandemic is boxed wine. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna start by introducing our panel and thank you everybody for being here. I have from man casting, I have my right arm, my left arm and both my feet, Sarah Sheps. I have the lovely Ashley Carboneau, Charboneau. Um, for our agents, we have Lisa Burke from the Burke Agency. We have Jackie Warden from Ritter Talent. We have Rick Garretts from Noble Kaplan. We have Bella Grundy from the Bella Agency. We have Adriana, oh, I've struggled with your name for so many years, Rose. We have Adriana from the characters. Rocca Selva. That. <laughs> we have Yannick Landry from Newton Landry. We have Amy Hines from Hines Management. Our actors that are gonna be speaking today, we have Andrew Prashad. We have Nathan Taylor. We have Andrew Ahmed. We have Darren Baker. We have Carrie Ann Doherty. Is it Doherty or Doherty? It's Doherty. We have Rabin Fanfare. We have Kelly Fanson. And we have Yvette McCoy. And speaking on the on, for, on behalf of producers, we have Adam Rodness and Sharon Yu. <clears throat> so we want to cover a lot of ground here. We want to take a lot of questions, but we're going to start with the most important question, which is, I think it's quite clear that all of our jobs have changed in the past few years. And I want to start with the agents. And I want to ask you, how has your job changed as how it was three years ago? And we can, we can share the mic. I can, start with, I can start with Yannick. Why don't we have Yannick start and just share your thoughts sure. on how your process has changed? Well, it's changed multiple times, let's be honest. So we're talking about from March 2020 to today. Um, it's not the same process as it was. Obviously, at the beginning of the pandemic, at the beginning of the lockdown, we all went into a coma in a way. <laughs> we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know when it would end. Uh, we were all very optimistic that it would be temporary. And then uh, we heard for the first time the word Zoom, which I had never heard of before. Um, casting directors in commercial specifically, um, picked up the pace very quickly in continuing to cast. 
because the advertiser's budget were set for the year and they were going to produce anyway. And so the beginning of it, we saw a lot of crap audition, I have to say, and I'm sure from a casting perspective, you've seen, you know, a lot, I, I think from the first two, three months of the, of the lockdowns in 2020, I think you were ready to accept absolutely anything we would send you because ultimately you were going to be shooting in someone's apartment on an iPhone. That's right. So, you know, we all saw the Jim Morton commercial to make you feel happy and we feel better. And then it changed again because we all figured it out that we were not coming back right away. And the casting directors, I, I, I know from the film and TV part for sure, and, and then as well in the commercial world, they started to becoming, they started to become more demanding about the production value, about what it should look like, what an audition should look like. Started to read, you know, you know, uh, articles on Variety and then Broadway World and, you know, best tip for self-tapes that we all started to read and forward to our clients. And we started as agents paying more attention to what the quality was, right, as well. So, you know, from a, that perspective to give you what you were, what you wanted. We saw casting, uh, directors uh, from the commercial side were the first one to try to go back in the room. Like I know that Shasta and Jigsaw had tried. I know even you tried as well at some point. Powerhouse tried as well. And because they were allowed to go back in the room with the protection and the, the social distancing and sanitation and masking and all that. But because they were allowed doesn't mean that it was that the actors were ready. And then what we noticed is what I was told is that was a massive like 75% cancellation drop, you know, uh, that people just didn't want to go. Right. So that kind of closed the deal that we were going to stay on this self tape situation for a while, that that's right. what's going to happen. And that's where we, I, I think from an agent perspective, myself anyway, that's when I figured it out that this isn't going anywhere. Like right. this is like, once we start this road of self taping, it's not going to end. Right. And what has changed dramatically from our perspective? And then Amy, I'm going to pass it to Amy after. And then Amy, you can pass it up to Bella. I see her above you. And then we can mm -hmm. just do it around. Please do. Uh, yeah. Um, but this is when our job becomes 24 7 because everybody realized we're not going back into the room. This self tape stuff is working. The casting directors are getting what they need. They can type a breakdown from their couch, they can watch the audition from their couch. They can make their pre-select from their cottage if, if they are away. And they are sending us breakdowns day in, day out. It starts at 8 a.m. and it goes till, just if you think about Vancouver time for some of the projects we work on, it goes on, to, it goes on and on and on and on. So it's nonstop. We are receiving now, some, we have to do submissions all day long. And at the same time, we have to receive your auditions all day long. And this is what we do. Uh, some of us have had to become almost editors in a way uh, where, you know, you can salvage an audition that you receive, but there's a technical glitch and you try to fix the audio if you can, try to fix the lighting if you can, um, instead of asking your actor to redo it uh, if the time is too short. Um, in some ways we've become acting coaches, uh, you know, where we, we have to give, we give feedback to our actors when necessary, like not on everything, please, thank God we would die. Um, but, you know, on bigger auditions or, you know, as I said before, as I, said, I think I mentioned that to you, uh, Stephen, like a, a campaign for a commercial, a commercial campaign, you're just gonna wanna make sure that this is really solid and this is what they're asking for, so. You, you will redirect your client if need be. So we're the coach, we're the, so we're the coach, we're the therapist, we're mm -hmm. the agent. And we used to say, you know, when we met with younger actors, yeah, you know, one of my speech was, this is show business. You're the show, I'm the business. So you're 10% of the, you're, you're, you're showing the, and the, you're the show and I'm the business, right? right? But now it's like we're interwoven into the show part of it. Right. Right. We have to, um, and I'll tell anecdotes later. So I'm going to pass it okay. to Amy. Amy, thoughts? So yeah, when I first started, I mean, we're going back like 25 years here, but 
It was the whole RDO process. Remember this, everyone? Please when share that because polar... I don't... yeah, <laughs> please share them that process because I don't think they realize yeah. how far it's changed yeah. and like what it it's... used to be like. You could not turn around a job in a day. That's right. Yeah. Okay, please so share. we would literally come into the office. Our office hours were 10 to six. We'd go in at 10 o'clock, probably 930 to get our stuff ready. Um, and we'd come into faxes. There'd be faxes yeah. in our fax machine of <laughs> breakdowns. And so we'd go through the faxes and we'd be like, okay, we can submit this person to this person. And we'd literally pull pictures and resumes. We would have everyone's pictures and resumes in like filing cabinets and pulling, 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 getting our packages together. And we had a deadline. We had to have these ready by, I think, what was it like 1230 or something? Yes. And I think every agent had a different timeline because there was one guy that would go around and pick up all of these packages from all it was, of these it agents. was actually my friend Dwayne Hall I believe yes who would, who would drop yes. off the packages now does every agent here remember that are y'all been in the game oh, long yeah. after him? okay so just for those that are watching you have no idea how far it's changed yeah. like literally from yeah. a casting perspective I would receive a stack of envelopes of manila envelopes like that and I was working for my mom at the time Shout out to my mom, Gloria Mann. And uh, I would have to open up each package. I would have paper cuts and we would put sticky tabs, mom, dad, kid, this, that, and we would sort them. And that's how we did it. It's changed so much. Okay, sorry to interrupt, yeah. keep going. Or, or No, that and it's good to hear on, on your end. Because, yeah, so, um, and God forbid, one of those breaks or one of those faxes came through at 12 o'clock when you're still trying to frantically get your packages together. And now you have a new breakdown. You're like, oh, shit. So now you're trying to pull more pictures, more like my heart rate at that point. <laughs> it was crazy. Right. I was totally like palpitations. Yeah, um, sure. And so, you know, we'd run our packages down to the end of the street. The guy would be there. He'd take them. And um, and that that was it. Okay, now we could breathe. Now we can like do our job. We can go through our email. We can meet with new clients. We can do talent payroll. We can do our invoicing. Like all of the all the jobs that we do aside from submissions and calling out auditions so that's how this has changed like now like it's we don't have that breathing room it comes in every you know 24 hours just like Yannick was saying it really does like the moment I wake up my phone is on and I go right to my my email like what has come in how many breakdowns do I have how many right. self tapes do I have to check that are due at 10 a.m you know I've got to walk my dog I've got to get breakfast I've got to do this I've got to get myself together before I can you know work for the day so it's it's managing all of that stuff all of the time right. it, it really is like, like Yannick said too it's like you know we're dealing with different time zones as well so you know we're not we're not done at six o'clock you know we might have something come in from from Vancouver mm -hmm you know, at 630. For sure. For sure. So to the other agents on the panel, uh, what are you finding the most challenging aspect of your job right now as it stands? And Adriana, Bella, Lisa, um, anybody, like, please speak on that. What are you finding, Rick? What is the most challenging component of the job right now? I actually love the self-tape system. Okay. Um, I find that I can view my clients' auditions I can see what the level they're at. Usually when I send them out for an audition, I don't know how they're doing. Right. I don't know what level performance they're at. Right. So this way, by viewing every tape that goes out of here, I can either say, you know what? I can give them a little direction, have them redo it and send a better tape to casting. It allows me to see where they're at in performance levels so that I know what I should be submitting them for right. as opposed to what I shouldn't be submitting them for, what they're ready for, where they need work, where they need classes. I love self-tapes. Okay. Um, I find that with that extra time, they can work on it, you know? Okay, it okay so we're not... We're now drifting into the oh. whole self-tape thing. And before we, uh, that's a big thing that I want to really involve our actors with. But before we move on to that, does any other agent want to speak on how it's changed your personal process, how much more time consuming it has become? I'm working a lot longer hours. That's for mm -hmm. sure, because we're viewing tapes all night long. Right. So whereas I would normally have my evenings free or my weekends free, I don't anymore. Right. If something's due early Monday morning, 
I have all my tapes come in late Sunday night and I'm viewing them so that I can get them to casting on time in the morning. So yeah, my hours are a lot longer. I'm working till at least midnight, almost every night. Right. Um, until all those tapes are in for the next morning. Right. Okay. Um, does anybody else from our agents uh, want to speak on the whole, um, how your job has changed and some of the additional stress and anxiety and effort that you have to put in to vet these tapes? Because, I mean, I could throw it to the actors and this is a really big discussion as far as what we do and what we don't like about self-tapes. From a casting perspective, I will tell you that we are now having to vet tapes as well. And the one thing that I love about self-tapes is it does afford us the opportunity to see more people. But we're now stepping in and having to, and we don't remove a lot of them. There are some times that people will remove, will upload the wrong audition. There are some times where people, they just make a lot of mistakes. Let me, Sarah, it's that's- because people, if people don't watch their tapes, a lot of the stuff that like my husband watches all the self tapes for everybody and Ashley does too sometimes and I do but um mostly it's like if you watched your own self tape you would see your audios out of sync you would see that it was shrunk to a tiny resolution you would see that we can't see you and you look like you're in witness protection or you would see that it's you know an RBC audition but we're casting McDonald's french fries and like it happens all the time. 99% if it's the wrong audition, it's labeled like image 764 or like, you know, and of course you or your agent are uploading the wrong thing when you're getting a thousand things. So if you take anything from what I say, please label your self tapes and please watch them. Yes. And again, from a casting perspective, a lot of times we'll send a link to our clients and they'll say, can you trim this down? And we are now in a position where we have to, go through them and really be very selective as to who we want to present and who we can't present. A lot of times we just eliminate the errors. And I think some of the errors, whereas Ashley, like Ashley, that's a lot of tapes because she has directed so many sessions in her history. And actually you guys get to see her more than you get to see Sarah and I. So Ashley, tell me some of the things that you've seen or some of the, your process in vetting the tapes and how you decide. Same as what Sarah said. Um, it's just, miss it i'll go through them all I, like i don't delete anything unless it's like the terrible quality or just like something that i don't want our clients to have to sit through or see if it's just going to be a waste of time um most things make it through yes narrowing it down when they want like i think somebody asked one of the questions like how many more self tapes do you get versus in-person auditions so many more because there's no time constraint on it so we can just give our clients as many options as possible. That said, we know that they don't necessarily want to sit through hours yes. and hours and hours of things. So we have to whittle it, whittle it down sometimes as well. Um, I yeah. want to touch on this really quickly because there was another question in there and it was uh, about self-taping and you don't get the feedback as you would when you were like in the room with yes. a, a session director. And I think that is the only thing that's hurting in the, um, self-tape world is I know you guys come in and this is how you think <laughs> it's meant to be and that's great and usually in the room we allow you to like get that one out and then we can redirect from there and I think that is the only <laughs> for an SOC rule I think someone else wrote too is like totally fine and a facial expression give us options easy self-tape that oof, done but for something where there's like a Tony in involved or if timing or comedy really yeah but, but if people have questions ash like if people have questions i always accept them to email and all like if you wrote the self-tape notes or dan did mm -hmm. like if you have some questions we, we're happy to help you through it if, if you mm -hmm. have some questions we're not like it's self-tape only um yeah and, well, I, and sorry i um please. hi everyone it's me dan you some hi, of dan. you when we write our self-tape instructions uh, you know we do you know, I've, I'm also an actor and I've read self-tape instructions from other casting places. We do tend to be very careful with how we write them in anticipating, okay, if I were running this live, what would be the problems that we'd see in our first yes. case? And trying to anticipate that, we can't always get it 100%. And every time I review a link, I always say to myself, I wish I'd said this, <laughs> right? Like, I wish I told them to you know, specify Actually, the eyeline or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Can't catch it all. No one's perfect, but we do try to 
provide the actors with. And, and we're here to answer questions, things. honestly. Like if, if it's yeah. really confusing or something, like we would love to help you. And sometimes when we do review, I'll watch stuff and I'm like, so almost there. And if there's the luxury of time, we will ask for a retake. And when sure. we do our long format too, like especially when we're doing this Borea Salming thing, when they were already in production, they only wanted four or five tapes per role like because they're yeah. you know they're busy the director the the exec producer don't have time to watch so then you know when we're watching them we're just you know we're, we have to be have to have uh an eye to find what they want okay but it, and, i have mm. i've loved it like i have gotten to know so many actors on a much deeper level i feel like i know all your actors inside out now i watch their auditions all day every day and uh, mm. so I'm grateful for that because I wouldn't have said that in my past. Our process of getting a breakdown out now is getting all the specs, you know, sending the breakdown to the clients for approval. And then Ashley or Dan will write self tape notes. And we try to really encapsulate the vision of that director. We send them a Google Doc, which is editable, not edible. I always get those words mixed up. And they can edit them and add their flavor or what they think they're missing. So when you get those self tape notes, those have been approved by the, the director. And we are trying to work on behalf of them to capture their vision. So now that we've talked about this, I want to throw it to some of our actors and talk about, are you getting clear self tape notes? What are you struggling with? What are you liking and what are you not liking about the process? If I can take two I, seconds just to jump in though, please, um, just yes. so that the actors and casting is aware, the agents can also modify the instructions that you send. So you guys use Actors Access. I usually add stuff or clarify or whatever. So the agents can simplify it even more from there. Right. So those self-tape notes are blessed by the director and it's his vision. So it's really important and we really try to be precise. So for our actors, and please, you know, do your thing. I want to hear from you. What are you, what are you missing? What are you loving? What are some of your issues with self tapes? Please, all of you. I can yeah. I start? Well, yes, Carrie Ann, please. You, you can lead off. Oh no, let let. Uh, she has her. Evette has her hand up. So oh, Evette. Okay, can go please. First. Yes. Okay. Okay. Second. So thank you. Yeah. First of all, I love the self tape process. Um, I love getting feedback from my agents. Sometimes I even ask my agents which take she likes better uh, before I submit, which is basically, and somebody was saying, I think Lisa was saying that we get sometimes the feedback from the casting directors. In my opinion, I did not get much feedback. Sometimes I get, oh, that was great, good, <laughs> you know? But, um, uh, and usually I get my feedback when I'm on set, when I got the job and then I ask, what could I have done better? I, I did that when I could. So I love that, that my agents actually see what I can do. And I also know from my agents that she was something, Yvette, that's really good. You know, it's, mm. it's so rewarding. Uh, I also like, because sometimes we are on set, I also do stunts and stuff. I don't need to try to get out at lunchtime to make it for a callback or for an audition. Uh, right. Every time I did that in the past, it never worked out because your head is just not in the right place <clears throat> when you have to, like when you're on set and you have to run out to do an audition. Callback never worked for me. My biggest challenge is uh, because I'm really not tech savvy and I actually, I feel for my agent, but in the beginning I was like, well, Bella, please, what do I do? Can I just send it to you? Can you do it? Because I'm an idiot. Uh, when it comes to that, I got better with this. I also, every time I make a self tape, I put uh, in the first seconds my name and my agent, and sometimes also the character or the role that I'm auditioned or the, the commercial that I auditioned for. So I think that also would help with, you know, when people send the wrong things because you see it right away on the beginning, right? But, but can um, I just add one thing? Here's one, one thing I want to dispel is we are not looking for these highly produced auditions. We really don't need that. It's really about, are you prepared with the material? You could use natural light. You need a, a ring light, a, a tripod and an iPhone. We are not and expecting- And we see you and we hear you. Good that's enough. All, that's right. all we yeah. need right now. That's all we yeah. need. Yes. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't oh, talking about I want to get to Rabin. But yeah, of course. High tech auditions. I was more thinking about no, I know, how do but... I send it? How do I attach it? That's right. the thing that was more for me. Ring light I got later. And I, I love that I can do more auditions. 
that even if I'm on set, I can do audition at night. Now with the ring light, I can do it at night before you have yeah. to, oh my God, the light is gone. What do I do? You know? Yeah. So I, I, I love the process. I cannot even imagine what you guys go through because sometimes I'm like, your agent has to put it through. Then you have to look at it. And sometimes Sunday night, I'm doing it late. And I'm like, oh my God. And the, the due date is Monday, 8 a.m. And you have to be up and do this, you know? Yeah. So I feel for all of you, um, and, but I love that I can ask my agent which which take she likes better and she gives me a feedback. Love it. Awesome. Okay. Ruby. So for me it's better. Okay. Hey, Ruby. I Yes. Hi guys. Sorry to come to you as this disembodied voice. My camera is being wonky. Um oh, Janice. <laughs> hi, it's Janice. Hi. Hi guys. I wanted to say one of the things that I find super, super helpful with the self tapes is when you give us something to reference. So when you give us uh, a YouTube link or, um, you know, something to give us the idea of a feel or a vibe that you're going for with the audition, because sometimes it's just not quite uh, clear when it's written down. So I find that a super helpful tip if you could keep doing that. Let me yeah, ask you this. I, just, I would second that. Just on the tail end of that, there are a few directors that we work with that I actually ask them to film like a video of like a personal, hi, my name is yada, yada, yada. Thank you for your audition. This is what we're looking for. Would a video help you with like a video message to you with articulation of yeah. what they're looking for? I with like that. that. Yeah, I think so. I think that's the problem I have. I read something like, uh, and I don't know what style of comedy or what, um, is it right. how physical of comedy do you want? When we were going into, I love self tapes. So I'm not, I love them because yeah, yeah. I can, mm -hmm. I don't have to quit my day job. You know what I mean? Like I don't have to call in sick um, yeah. anymore. Uh, I can shoot it at midnight if I want to. Um, but, uh, I, the, the nice thing about going into the room is I would make my decision at home, come into the room, do it. And somebody would say, uh, well, okay, let's bring that down <laughs> or whatever and try it this way. Um, right. So I do miss that. Um, I, I have been trying to send in two versions nowadays. Right. One, my first instinct and one, what I think maybe you want. So I, send in and my agent always says make sure they're very different if you're sending two auditions in so that um, they're not just slightly different but they are very different to make it worth your while mm -hmm. okay uh, Rabin please a couple of things as an actor if we're three years into this there's enough YouTube videos and TikTok videos for you to know on how to do a proper self-tape Right. And so I just feel that not having lighting, not having just like you chose this profession. So it's your responsibility also to help your agent to get the best product out there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like there's like if you don't have a backdrop, there's a dollar store, get a plastic tablecloth, get the double sided tape, tape it up in the back and Canadian Tire, I bought a ring light that was 50% off. It came out to $15 and that's what I travel with. And right. if you're in a hotel room, there's always an ironing board and you just open the ironing board, flip it sideways, clip the light and you are good to go. Mm -hmm. So in regarding to the self tapes, I do love it. I mm -hmm. do miss the community of being in the yeah. room for yes. having the director and for the client saying, just as Carrie Ann had mentioned as well, to know exactly what is the tone in regarding to comedic. Mm -hmm. One thing with commercial, I find that they're asking like five different actions. Like, can we get you in your bed waking up? Can you pretend that you're putting your yeah. dog? And then can you also have you in the kitchen? And it's like, that can be very daunting for an actor. Right. And I understand that. But when we used to be in the room, it was the table and it was a chair. Right. So on um, both sides, I can hear the frustration, mm -hmm. but it's also great that we're having this discussion for yeah. all of us mm -hmm. to try and understand, but we got to help our, our everybody. Go well, ahead, uh, Darren. Uh, let me get to Andrew first and then Darren, I'll throw back to you. Where's Andrew? I'm here. And then, and then Kelly. Yes. Okay. Hey, um, uh, self tapes, I think are really, really helpful. Um, but I do, I do agree that 
I think what's missing is, especially in a Zoom audition, you know, we get callbacks and it's a Zoom callback mm -hmm. and everybody yeah. has a black screen and everybody's muted. Yeah. That's hard because, especially for the comedy ones, it's, it's really hard for the comedy ones because when you're in the, in, when you're in the space and you're, you're adding an improv or you're adding something or you're delivering the line in one way and you hear like a breath or a, or a, a, a muted chuckle and you're like, that's the direction. Okay. And you can on the fly, especially if you can improv, you're on the fly, you can adjust the audition to what the room is feeding you. Whereas when everybody's blacked out, it's like, I don't, I don't know. Is that, is it, was that <laughs> it? Was that, like, um, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I think that's, I, that sucks. I, I miss that a lot, but the benefit to like the first round audition, second round zoom thing, that first round audition is, is great because especially for those of us who don't live downtown, that saves mm -hmm. the commute. Those of us who have kids, those of us, you know what I mean? Like have the mm -hmm. other things going on. That's the, uh, that part of the self tape is, is brilliant. And then you can review it and you can, the more class you take, the better you get at analyzing like this is this is like what is what is it what it is right now so the more class you take the more ready you are to look at your own work and be like yeah that oh no that that was terrible i need to hit that again um so i know somebody was saying like they, they don't review their tapes i don't how do you not look at your work what mm -hmm. what i don't understand mm -hmm. you blew my mind just now <laughs> no. andrew you would be surprised how many kids cats i've seen or they'll be like oh that was kind of shit. good enough and then they submit it. And I'm like, ooh, can't really submit that. The outtakes I could share with you all if I never would, would baffle your mind. Oh, shucks. Uh, I, want to, I, I want to throw to Kelly Fanson, and then I want to talk to our producers as well. So Kelly, I want to know your thoughts on this. Well, you know, I, I hear a lot, um, you know, actors are, are speaking to each other a lot about this and, mm -hmm. It's a lot of the same stuff. Um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm glad, is it, um, sorry, Andrew, that you mentioned callbacks. Um, Cause yeah, those recalls feel really weird when all of a sudden you jump to Zoom and you, you're in that vacuum, which is a word I hear a lot. Actors saying they feel like they're in a vacuum now that they don't have feedback, but those same people are also saying, I'm glad I don't have to pay for parking, take transit, take time out of my day in that way. So, so it's a bit um, both sides, you know, like everybody um, sees the pros and cons of it. Right. Um, I am finding that um, some of the things I'm hearing is that directors um, are discovering that after they hire someone from a tape and and i just heard this the other day um with some short film actors um everybody cast in the same film and um the experience has sometimes been because you can do it so many times um like self-tape in your own space not being on the spot in the room yeah that you can work on it so many times that it looks like you know what you're doing. Right. And when it comes to actually the experience of being able to do it on set, that there's a discrepancy. Right. I believe that. So, so that's kind of an interesting perspective. Um, also, um, just this idea of speaking to your agent about like, what do you think? Uh, asking your agent, you know, how, how did I do? Do you like it? Is it good? I've been in the business. Um, I've had an agent agents for 45 years. Oh, Jesus. And um, it's not even in my thought process right. to ask my agent if right. I'm doing a good job. Right. Um, it's my job to know that, to work with an acting coach, to in a variety of ways uh, that have nothing to do with my agent. Now, maybe that'll justify the 15% more these days, but, um, but like, I just can't even imagine putting that burden on my agent and getting them to tell me, am I doing well? Yeah. Um, so so I, I didn't even, no one said that to me, this is the first time I'm hearing it. And I'd love to know from agents, honestly, um, is that something you want to be doing? You know, especially with the workload that you have, you're mm -hmm. telling me the hours, and I've talked to my agent 
um, you know, we're, we're good friends and I talked to her, uh, have spoken to her over the pandemic and beyond about the workload. Um, but is it sustainable? You know, this idea of working like that, if you'd known you were going to work those hours, would you have chosen that career path? I just don't know. I want my agent to have energy for, you know, the job. And it sounds so incredibly taxing. Right. Um, and I think I think it is. And, and let's I think Lisa wants to speak and whoever any agent that wants to speak on this, because this really does reflect yeah. how, how your job has changed. I just want to say yeah. that in this Thank industry. You. Thank you, Kelly. That was we've we've learned as agents that our our work is a 24 hour a day seven day a week job we are mother financial advisor psychiatrist to all our clients you know we have you on our rosters because we want you to work and we want to help you move forward in this industry so whatever we can do as agents to get you to the next point, it, it'll benefit both of us. Right. I, I encourage actors to talk to their agents, keep those lines of communication open. It's so important. If you're feeling alienated by your agent, let them know, communicate it. Because a lot of the times your agent is sitting in front of a computer doing the breakdowns, doing the submissions, giving out auditions, getting in sides. You know, we're doing all that, mm -hmm. but we want to make sure our clients are happy as well. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I do agree with that. Yeah, I, I have to say just asking an agent, is my work good? That's all that point was for me. It was why just not? They're working with I, you. Huh? Your agent, is, your agent is working with you. Sure. They're not yeah. working for you and mm -hmm. you're not working okay. for them. They're, you're a team towards yeah. the same goals. So yeah, you should be able yeah. to ask your agent. To ask them after every single audition might be a little much because right. really if casting directors are bringing you in, you in and you're getting these auditions, then you have to assume you're doing something right or they would not be bringing you in when sure. you're submitted. I think, yeah. I think it's because- what? I think you're Bella, right. you... we watch them all. We, if you're brought in by the same casting director over and over, you feel good about yourself because yeah. we wouldn't waste your time or our time. If you get a recall, you feel extremely good about yourself. You have like, you know, we get a thousand submissions. Now we're recalling 10 people. If you get an avail check pin put in you, I know you're not getting the money necessarily, but you're like on the podium at the Olympics. You have to feel good about yourself. Right. That's that's your cue right there to know that you're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. If it's for a major film audition, then yeah, absolutely ask your ask your agent how mm -hmm. was that audition? Was there anything that could have changed? Uh, is there something more I could have worked on? Right. Um, we don't get yeah. feedback from but that. For, yeah. But for but for every commercial audition is what I'm thinking because I mean we used to go in. I've been in this for 30 yeah. years and you used to go in and your agent never saw your auditions. So never. this is something new, right? Totally. So, so yeah, I would, I, I don't ask my agent how, cause I never have before. So this is something right. that you're saying something completely new to me. And well, I'm thinking, cause we're talking about commercials. In. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I don't need to, I, I don't, I don't, I don't ask because. Sarah, never have. Sarah said You're something. Right. I just, I just want to jump in and say one thing here because yeah. we've been doing this for 39 years. And they're going to the get Bella and Nathan. And the process has changed a lot. But I will yeah. say this. I hear a lot of chatter online, on Facebook, actors talking to actors, suggesting somehow that these are all useless and that they're going out into the ether and nobody's watching them. And I think that is noise that you have to rid in your head. You know, I'll, listen, I'll say this, the last three years, and I'm not saying this for any other, I, I, I've been working a lot and I attribute a lot of it to self-taping and that they're being seen. And I think Sarah said something. If they're asking to see you, they're watching your tapes. Oh, hell yeah. And like, like We would never listen. waste anyone's time, Darren. And even with I, Corey, when we knew we were allowed to send four role, four people I'm per with role you. when they were in it, we were request maybe five or six tapes. We respect your time. There's never a time we're like, oh, let's just get a bunch and see, you know, throw shit against the wall. Right. Never. 
And I'm not kidding. Listen, it's a lot of work on our end. And those of us who live alone, who don't have built-in readers, like I found a community and I've said this to people online, call me up. I will barter. You need my help. I'll give you, you, you like, let's like find a community of like-minded people. But the most important thing is throw yourself into them, make little movies, do things that you can't do in the room. Like I create little movies. My agent says, I can't believe this shit you come up with. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Throw them out there and yeah. move on to the next. Yeah. And God willing, you'll book. Yeah, no doubt. Okay, Bella, you have your hand up. And then I'm going to get Nate. I'm going to get Yannick. I'm going to get Jackie. And if anybody has a question, please like put your little hand up chat thingy. Okay, Bella. Yeah. Please. Okay. So, yeah, I, you know, I think it's really interesting listening to Kelly Fanson talk about the fact that she, you know, would never even occur to her to ask her agent how she's doing. And Yeah, but she's also been doing this for 64 years. Yeah. Right? And, and I'm not saying that I couldn't. And I'm not, and I have a relationship with my agent and right. oh, yes. agent. not judging it. I'm just all. saying, no, 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 I know. I'm just saying, I just never even thought of asking her. Right. I know. I just find that it, it's very, it's interesting to me because that's how it was at the beginning, but I, you know, I, but it has changed so much. In fact, you know, and we're all talking about the self tapes and I feel like when my clients say to me, how was that? Or what do you think of this? Um, it depends on how often they ask because there's only so much time during the day. But mm-hmm. I, I like the fact that it's given me an opportunity to actually be a creative team together because that's really satisfying for me. If mm-hmm. I can, if I, I have big life skills, I know a lot about acting. And so if if what I know and I can add it to, to my clients, then we're working together as a team. And that's that's just so much better than what it used to be for me personally. But time consuming, oi. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, Bella. Yeah. Nate. Okay, so I wanted to throw out this question on how we stand out when it comes to a commercial self-tape right. because the self-tape for so long felt like you're going to come in and you're going to smile and you're going to hold this coffee and that's what's maybe going to book you the part and you walk off right. and there's no way to stand out when i just have to smile with a mcdonald's coffee cup in hand okay this is a good wait hold on sarah I, this is a good way to involve where's adam rodness and sharon you who are two of my favorite producers who are <laughs> part of that process that even I think at times they're not sure and they're top flight producers. Yeah, like for me, it's it's been a discovery over the past few years. I've been doing self-tapes since I was at least 16 years old. And it's been this idea of now it's self-taping for a commercial. You kind of want to have this idea of shooting the commercial itself as close as possible to show them that this is what's going to work for what they want. But that's right. hard to do when you're just an actor, if you're by yourself, if you don't have the community. I've built up a large community. I have people that can help me. But mm-hmm. for the new people out there, I could see why it would be daunting to make a self-tape for something right. like a cat commercial. <laughs> okay. I want to bring in Adam and Sharon for a second because we have had many email exchanges as and they are commercial producers where we get to the end and there's very little to do in the spot other than sip this and smile or bite that and smile. And then they're emailing me and they're saying to Sarah and I, we need more. We don't have it. It's a, it's a six second or a 15 second spot. They understand this process. I would love to hear from Sharon and Adam as producers, you know this process. We've, we've spoken at length and Adam is also an actor as well and a filmmaker, but he's now in, you know, we work together on a production level and it's really difficult. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, before I was really gonna, I was really interested to to really decipher be- between edible and editable. If we could go back to that, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I uh, I think it's, I mean, from you know, from being on both sides of it, um, I could yeah. say that the clients and agencies I work with, nobody knows what they want, and it's the same thing in long form too. It's like no one really knows what they want. As a writer, you could write a script. Um, and think of a character one way, but when that actor walks in, boom, you know, your socks are blown off and like, okay, immediately the other direction. So coming up with those things to stand out and really being your own director while doing these tapes is the key. 
because yeah. you're trying to really obtain that heightened level of creativity with the minimal stuff that you've been giving to work off of. Um, but you know, the, the process is kind of the same ish as it was when it was live. Although again, we share the same thing. No one's rushing to the casting house. No one's trying to get parking. No one's late. No one's behind. Everyone's on zoom. Everything's consolidated into, you know, a nice presentation for the client and agency. And that's what a lot of the actors don't get to hear or see about is that director is also hired to execute the vision of the creatives on the agency, agency side too, right? And that's where it's like a whole other mess of what do people want because then they have to go and please the client. So the commercial casting process is a whole lot different than the long form film and TV process. Right. And again, it has its ups and downs. Um, but uh, I think, you know, going going forward, you know, doing uh, what Nathan was talking about, you know, trying to stand out of the crowd and, you know, really being your own director and being creative is going to is going to win you that short list at least and then get past, you know, into the creative director kind of land. So Sharon and, and, and Adam, when you guys are emailing us and it could be anywhere from 9 to 11 p.m. and we're working on an <laughs> SOC 15 second spot and we don't have it, and you're asking us to repost, what's going through your mind? Like, are you feeling the same way as we are? Like, oh my God, really? Of course, I mean- Probably like, worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, and and like we totally, I mean, on production side, at least we feel for the actors and, and like having to do these self tapes, being able to be in three different places in one, you know, with a backdrop that's all blue, it, it's really tough. It is, and and I think like most of the time directors are looking for, if it's not a very specific creative, like a, a, a comedy spot or something, right. they're looking for some originality and just like a little bit of authenticity. And, and that's sometimes the difference. And it can be felt through the little nuances, which is why oftentimes in uh, self-tape notes, you'll see things like, uh, you know, tell us a story or something you know it's like those things are to see personality of people and and to like really get to know them a little bit because not seeing them in the room like you there's a lot of things that you miss and of being able to like know this person a little bit more and i think that's that's one of the things that actors can do to sort of like stand out is like even though you're being asked to just hold a coffee cup and smile, you could, there's like some kind of personality injected, like often just creates that connection right away with directors, especially. And um, a good director will have, you know, the ears and eyes of the agency and the clients, and they'll be able to convince them of, of a lot of things. So, you know, if you can appeal to the director, I think that's, that's like a really big uh, help. But in terms of the feedback and not being able to to like get a sense of what people feel in the room, especially when you're auditioning, it's it's that's also tough. I've I've like really sympathized with actors. Like I've even thought that maybe we should all leave our cameras on or something like to help right. bring a little more humanity in it as well. But um, I think the challenge is that we just need the tape to send to clients. And so, you know, we want the best audio and the most like succinct tape possible. Right. Um, but I think we're all open to that, to strategies on how to make it a bit more humanist in the Zoom world. So let me ask this. This is a good point for, for the actors here. Like when you're on your Zoom recall, would you prefer our cameras to be on? Even uh, if it was, even if it was just like, the audio because because mm. sometimes the way the setup is i can't actually like Got see it. my screen because my eye line is here and my screen is over there but um but if i could hear like what is happening in the other side even that would help a bunch so if, if you saw us reacting and smiling or laughing because a lot of times like and sarah and ashley can can attest to this like yeah. we always say and, and adam and sharon like let's all shut our cameras off let's leave the director's camera on and we are like in the back and you don't see me, you don't hear me. And a lot of times 
Sarah won't let me, let me be a co-host because I do practical jokes on people, but wow. I, I, I miss you. I, just, I, I, I want you to see me and I want to see you and I want to make that eye contact. But Will Stephen, that... we need to get a nice clear audition. So I think we have to keep, like oh Zoom is God. not designed for, for auditioning. God loves Zoom, yeah. but yeah. I think we have to keep everybody's camera off and, and sound off to give sound, a nice yeah. clear. Mm. But, because but, this is the I, presentation that we're giving to the clients is this Zoom, and it's already terrible quality. The second we start adding other sounds and images and stuff like that, it's just, it over yeah. I know we love audition. what you're doing, and we're laughing and cheering. And, like, and, we're and most people will come on and be like, I was sorry, I was like laughing so hard. And like, I know you guys are missing that, but it, it really is the final picture. It's like, we can't show a take of you and then there's like sounds and dogs barking and no not shit sounds like not sounds if they're spotlighted if actors are saying to us that they would prefer our cameras to be on which won't promote lag not not sound but just to have that connection if that's well, what we they don't know about the lag that's why my, we've always my done thing. it that way because it's laggy and um also once i spotlight you because that's how we have to record you can't see anyone else anyways so it's like you're only going to get right. your own image. So you're okay. not going to be able to see everyone else because I can't record everyone else as well. So we're spotlighting right. you. So only you're visible. So everyone else just- So please trust we're watching, laughing, cheering, <laughs> loving you from behind the scenes. Yeah. Is okay. there a way- <laughs> I think it's hard for see, actors to something. realize there's a lot of things that would be distracting <laughs> on camera for- everything going on in a zoom meeting and if you're the actor and you're distracted by all of the faces up top here you're hearing other sounds from other people drinking coffee or something that could throw you off as well mm -hmm. but okay. there's, there's the enjoyment uh, I, of hearing someone laugh or seeing yeah. a smile that makes you go i did a good job now i can walk away from this audition happy so there's a right. give and take there I would. I would me, like the biggest, the biggest stress for me is actually the the Zoom callback. That's the the recording is good, but the Zoom callback always stress me out. And the main reason is because I'm not tech savvy, and I'm always worried. What if something goes wrong, and I don't know what to do? That that's my yes, stress. Something will go wrong. Something goes wrong every single Zoom. Yes. So don't apologize. Yes. It's fine. Yes. We understand. Yes. So okay. yes, things will go wrong, but you know, we will not let you leave the Zoom until we get the audition that we need no to doubt. present to clients. That helps. Don't Thank stress you. about this. Please, please, everybody, do not stress about the tech. We will make sure you have a beautiful Thank recall you. and we can present you to clients. That's Always. our job to stress out, not yours. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. So I would say, oh. carry on here. I would just say yeah. that it would be nice to see your faces before the Zoom starts and the, or as the Zoom starts and then go out. Just so, it's, like, it's, one of us is it's always live. Me, and right? like, no, but Ashley, I think they're wanting to see all of us. We want to and... see who's in the yeah. room. Yeah. I used I to agree. come in I, and there'd be 10 people in the room and I could see all of them. Now I, I come in as one that. person. I don't know who else is in the room. I want to see the faces in the room. If you could message my, nice. my boss, Sarah Sheps, and let her, tell her to let me on. Even we have to start wearing pants. If you want to see us, you go get us. <laughs> oh, no, you're not wearing pants now. Oh, I'm not. Anyway, no. uh, you can. <laughs> I think, I think uh, hi, guys, it's Janice again. I think all of yeah. those things would be really nice. But realistically, we have to understand casting has limited time. They're seeing so many of us. These would be ideal circumstances. Yeah. But we also have to own a level of professionalism and be able to just deal with, if we can't see them, we can't see them. We still have to show up and perform no matter what. Okay, just Yannick. But, but Stephen, we are what? moving into in-person a lot too. I didn't want to Sarah say that. First. Sorry, Yannick, Yannick. <laughs> no, I don't know what I'm answering anymore. I mean, we went from feedback to Zoom callback <laughs> no. to to, you know, uh, so I don't know why I was speaking, uh, but <laughs> I could, I'll tie it up maybe in, a, in, in, in ending on the, the feedback part and try to get into the now conversations where we're at. But a lot of the points were already made by Lisa and Bella already, but uh, feedback and, and answered by some of the actors, like you're, you should like bring yourself tips. Now we've moved on to callbacks. So that's just like, okay, let's, I'm, backtracking but in your first audition especially on commercial audition you should be able to sell feedback okay like as yeah. in you watch your audition like okay take one was great take two is better uh, and and somebody mentioned it and it was one of the producers i think it was one of the producer um bring some personality to it 
okay? Especially in a commercial. Like, I'll give you a trick that we give little five years old sometimes, like we have children as well, you know, and they're new and they've never done this before. And we tell that, the, that to the parents, uh, you know, that they're helping them do their audition. And we say, okay, this is a commercial audition. They want personality. Yeah. They want to see something fun, right? Because it has to be catchy. They have like 15 seconds to, to catch your attempt, to catch their attention, right? And I explain it to the parents that they in, in turn have to explain that to the five years old. Not my problem how they do that, but- <laughs> I tell them to run on the spot before the audition. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. But it, like, Get all I the energy them, out. That's it. But I tell them if you're doing a commercial audition, if there's dialogue, of course, make sure they're as comfortable with it as possible, but also make sure that they're themselves, that they bring energy to the scene, that they bring energy to that lens, okay? Um, and I explained it to them, I said, when they move into long form film and TV that Adam was talking about, we need something a bit different because that is where you need consistency, right? So you're gonna get your first audition and you're gonna do something great for a TV show. And then you get a call back. Well, the director that's watched your first audition kind of wants you to do almost the same thing at the callback, but he might have some redirection, right? That's why they're bringing you back. And then if you get the job, you have to remember what you did the callback that the director wanted, because that's what they got to want you to do all day, the same way, the same, you know, while they do all the, the trick shots and the reverse shots, and they want the same level of performance all day. You're doing a 30, 30, second commercial SOC for McDonald's or even imagine six second TikTok commercial for McDonald's. Yeah. What are they going to remember? Yeah. The personality, right? And they're going to shoot this all day. You're on set for eight hours to shoot right. 30 minutes, 30 seconds of footage for a commercial. Right. So every take has to be a bit different, a bit spicy. Mm -hmm. What are they going to pick? Which one are they going to get? Which one are they going to like the most? And I think if you keep that in mind in the commercial world, your level of ratio of audition to callback to being shortlisted or on hold or a veil check or all those words we're not supposed to use um you know your ratio is going <laughs> to get high <laughs> your ratio is going to go up right? right and when you and, and there was there you know we were uh, I, I know it, i think it was, it was lisa who was mentioning it talk to your agent yes it's, don't talk to me every day i love you all um you know and you know once a week okay maybe if we need to um, but if you're auditioning and you, also commercials well. are different than film and series when you ask very different. Like, very it's, different. It's, it's very different. I mean, yeah. the, the, the level of involvement that I have in long form TV and film uh, in an audition from the submission, from, from the receiving the audition to receiving the, the self tape to submitting the self tape. Listen, I won't be going to do color, uh, color or audio correction on the commercial audition okay <laughs> right. but if you've got if you've given me a really powerful dramatic scene for uh, for for a tv show uh and the the read is there the acting is there the emotion is there and i don't want you to redo it because really it is a great take and this is you you hit it i feel that's what they want i will drop that into my movie and i'll press the button that says auto correct and then right. oh look you're not reddish anymore. Your face looks beautiful. And right. the sound is it's clear and crisp. But I will take the extra step. But I will tell the actor, I really love that read. So I spent a bit more time. So that's what you should do next time yourself. Make sure that you can, you know, up your game, technically speaking, if you can. Um, and, 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 and then get my feedback. But like a commercial audition, as I said, I think I said it at the very beginning, I'm not going to give you feedback unless it's a big campaign or a really funny script that, you know, mm -hmm. I actually really, you know, think would be funny to watch you. Oh, Yannick, you all of it. our commercials you're not passionate about and you're not like really feeling them? Just joking. Oh, I can say that the Southwest Airline commercial today, I don't <laughs> understand it at all. I have read the script and I don't get it. So, no problem. I'm getting, there's, I'm also getting times, there's also times, and I just want to bring this up, when we're getting 10 auditions in from you guys, 10 auditions in from Powerhouse, totally. 10 from Jigsaw, yep. and they're all different scripts. And we, we're waiting for all those self-tapes to come in. It's very time-consuming from an agent's point of view to it. know what script goes with which audition. 
you know, people are sending in their auditions. Are they doing the right script? So right. then we've got to go back and look at the script and make sure they're doing the right thing. Right. So we're hoping in many ways that the performers are reading the instructions, reading the scripts, right. reading it three or four times over before you film so right. that you don't question yourself right. after you send out your audition, right. right? Okay, let me get to Jackie and then Andrew and then Andrew A with the great hair. Uh, okay, so Jackie, you go first. Yeah, so I'll just comment on a few different bits of things that everyone's been saying and just kind of loop it all together. Um, there was one part that Kelly mentioned that we didn't address. So Kelly was the one who brought up the whole feedback, but you specifically said about like uh, sending my agent two things and you pick the best sort of thing. Um, I have to say, so first of all, actors, you can ask your agent, do you gate your tapes? Because as agents, we have the option on the databases, when you upload, does it go straight to casting or do we have to watch and approve first? So I know oh, the agents on this call are great. I know that we're all watching, but that's not the case for everybody. So with me watching everyone's tapes, including everyone's commercial tapes, um, I don't want to pick for you. I want you to watch your own work and upload your best choice. And if I feel that it's not up to par or I know you're capable of more or I mean, obviously we have auditions because if you see 10 people, 10 people are going to bring something different to the table. But if you do your audition, let's say you do it sad. And I really, really, really strongly as an agent feel that this script was meant to be happy. Then I'll tell you to go add another take. Or if you were you did it sad but could you be a little less sad? Then I'll give you that sort of feedback. But if you ask me to watch two things and pick between them, and then you go and upload it to the database after, now as an agent, I have to rewatch it again. And I watch the tapes the whole way through because the sound will disappear three minutes in. Or, you know, something you didn't notice the first time, like the cat or the dog coming through, will walk through. So actors, you guys have to do your work. And I think Yannick was starting to say it before too, like agents only get 15% and we are doing so much more of the work right now. So please, you got to start watching yourself and doing that part. Um, and then as well, that was mentioned, actors read your instructions. Like at, I know with Heinz and I know with Ritter, we send out the auditions. And then we send you a text message that says you've got an audition on text. People are writing back right away. Well, what time is it due? Oh, how many pages is the script? Are you kidding me? Like, guys, please do your own work and give your agents the time that they need. Um, something else that I would like, um, actually, first for the casting agents and for the, the casting directors and the agency people that are here, you guys mentioned something that, can we see you? Can we hear you? I think because of the volume of self tapes that agents are going through, we're trying to streamline our actors into one process. So we're basically getting them all set up for film and TV with the backdrop and the ring light. So when commercial auditions come in, which was exactly, I know that when you were talking about the, you getting out of bed and then you waving at the window, uh, my actors are so confused. They're like, do we actually do this in the living room now? I thought you said you can only ever tape in front of the, the backdrop. So from a casting perspective, if you guys remember and you have the time to say, film this in your actual kitchen and put that in your notes, that would be super helpful. I often add it in anyways to avoid those questions on text message, but you can let actors know that there is more of a freedom with commercials because commercials were never meant to be self-taped. They were meant to be in the room and improv and, you know, a lot of the scripts aren't finalized when we would, even when we were doing callbacks, we wouldn't necessarily have the lines um, back when I was acting. So it's, yeah, so that would be helpful so that actors know that they have a bit more liberty. And then Actors, what you it? have liberty with us. If it's sleep liberty, country, be in a bed. If it's a kitchen, be in a kitchen. If you're more comfortable in front of a backdrop, you guys shoot in front of a backdrop. Remember, we're casting you as the actor. We are not casting your wardrobe. We are not casting your set. We are not casting your props. So you do what works for you. Please know that's for every audition we ever send you for commercials. 100. And when you okay. ask them to eat something, they really do need to eat something. Yeah. And and then my very last point that I want to make before other mm -hmm. people talk, um, something that I wanted to bring up for that, whoops, see, my first time with headphones. <laughs> um, something for the actors to know as well. So in Canada, you have, I hope that works, you have your agent. If you were in the U.S., you would have an agent and you would have a manager. So in Canada with your agent, they're doing more for you. 
for still only that 15%. So what happened when all of the self-taping came in is like, okay, I'm, I'm probably the newest agent here. I've been an agent for four years. I started in March of 2019. I got one year of like awesomeness and then the pandemic hit and my whole job description that I just changed or trained for had changed. But in my first year, I loved it. I could talk to you about your social media. I could talk to you about your IMDB. I could read scripts. I could pitch you. I could, I could help you edit your demo reels. I could give you feedback all day long. And that was awesome. And now I can't. So I have a, a children and youth roster. I only represent newborns through 18. And for the other, I know there's a lot of parents on this call and for the other agents who rep kids who are out there, we're doing, we're doing more. Cause in a commercial, like some agents might just have the dad, but I've got both kids or I've got both kids and a mom and a dad. So there's more that I'm working through and I am doing audition or I'm doing submissions all day. I'm watching self tapes all day and all night. So I'm just really burnt out because it's, it's like, I've become a robot. It's just those two things. And I hardly have any FaceTime with my actors and I don't get to do any of the fun agenting stuff like your, yeah. your development. So I miss that. I wish, I really wish commercials were fully back in person. I love watching the self tapes for film and TV, but I wish, I wish commercials would go back, but, and then I love that you guys are doing the callbacks. It's just tricky because the pandemic allowed agents to recruit talent who lived further away. Like I was really strict. I would only take on kids from the GTA when I started so that they could drive in for auditions. But now I have people throughout, literally throughout the country. So when we tell them they have an in-person, oh my gosh, the excuses start coming out and I feel bad. Like my own teenager had a call back on Monday and they got sick on Sunday. So when I went to ask, was there a zoom option? I thought they'd think I was lying. Like I didn't want to drive in. So as an agent, I'm really nervous giving regrets for my talent because I think you guys are all assuming it's just like, no one wants to make the effort to come into town. So well, let, to let me that. just say Jackie, like when we, and we have been trending towards um, in-person recalls a lot more lately. And I think it's going to continue in that route. And a lot of times, like we have our run sheet with the pictures, the agency, the info, and, and, and your little thumbnail. And then at the bottom, we have Zoom. So we will see people that are comfortable coming in, and we will see people on Zoom on a callback. It's really your comfort level, and we will respect that, and we will honor that, and we have no problem with that. For those who if wish If you to are sick, do not come in. If you feel very sick, please, please, please do not come in. We will Zoom you. Perfect. This my my example wasn't with you guys, but I was just putting no it for sure. But I'm just saying, you. like for for all y'all, like please understand that, like on all of our recalls that are in person, we also have a small selection at the bottom that are on Zoom, and we have no problem with that. And it really won't change the booking whether you're in person or on Zoom. It really comes down to you and the performance, like it should. That said, there are like moments of like, they want to see actors act together and that's why we're doing in person. For Otherwise, sure. like if it's one at a time, we always prefer Zoom. Um, For sure. And then that said again with like, if you are going to be Zooming in, just know that there's probably a smaller window that you can do it because going from in-person to Zoom to in-person to Zoom when we're in studio, it's a lot of technical work. So right. it, your, your window will be a lot smaller if you choose to Zoom in or come in person, same idea. It's just you'll have to be, you know, there are time constraints around that as well. Right. It's not just whatever you want. <laughs> but there has <laughs> not been one in-person recall where someone hasn't had to zoom in and we always make it work. Mm -hmm. Always, always. And we're casting the best actor, whether you live in Toronto and can come or you live in Ottawa and can't, if you are the best actor for the role, you are going to book it no matter how you audition. No matter how. Um, Andrew Prashad. Hey. Um, yeah, I just want to bring up a couple things that we haven't talked about yet. One of the things is like the big, the big asks. Um, so if we're talking about pandemic and how, how things have gone, especially for commercials. So for example, for example, there was an audition that came out recently and it was just for like a commercial. And it was like, there was like a two minute monologue mm -hmm. that they wanted us to deliver mm -hmm. for, for this, for this commercial. And it was like, and the turnaround was like mad quick. So it's like we had to learn, build, develop this monologue for right. a commercial that Ooh. are you, you sit there and watch like a minute and a half of me like digging into this monologue for this commercial of I forget what it was. 
Um, so like some like there's the big physical asks and stuff like that, but like when you don't have some. Andrew, space. you know you can cheat. Like the actor rule is when we had you come in, we would write it out on a giant board and it would be right beside the camera. Yep. So you guys all should be cheating. Have like a computer app, write it up yourself. We are not, it's not a memorization contest. We would have it up for you in the room. Please, 100. please, please cheat and don't waste your time memorizing. That's yeah, no, that's there's, there's that's also this. <laughs> I'll add this. Um, there are a, a, a bunch of teleprompter apps you can get. Some of them are hmm. even free for your laptop. Wow. And yeah, so you can teleprompter this. That's like, I, I do it all the time. <laughs> My Full husband cheats on everything. Like, yeah. there's, I don't think he's memorized anything. She, <laughs> she, she, that the lesson as long is it's not on every you, time. Yeah, exactly. Oh God. Okay, Andrew. And then Man. the yeah. So that was like the big ask sometimes, but that's hmm. that's good to know. And also deadline stuff. Um, I try out like as soon as the breakdown comes out. Um, if I can do it, I'll I try not to wait for the deadline. My question is, if we wait for the deadline, has this thing already been cast? No. Sometime? Or do no. you like, you hold no. it, you wait? And Andrew, there's not been one job in the pandemic we haven't extended the deadline. And I think we're on 736 um, jobs on EcoCast in the pandemic. Every single job I extend, the agents can tell you there is not one, and I mean one, we haven't extended. It is not a rush. You get us the best tape when it's convenient for you. Totally. As long you, as you, you make the deadline, and a lot of Monday, time, it will be yeah. seen. And if your agent calls and asks for an extension, we will email that audition or upload it direct and say to the client, please watch this one. Like, we got you to the best of our ability. If it's two days late, no. It's a few hours, no problem. Andrew, we're on your side. Totally. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of go back to the script conversation we were talking about and, uh, Talking about how, you know, I think it would be great if we had access to the full script every time. I know sometimes we don't always get that. And it's just like, you know, a little description of what we're supposed to do, whether it's holding the coffee cup or whatever that is. But I think it's always nice to kind of know the context of where that shot comes into the piece. And um, that's, yeah, just a, a request. I would love to kind of see more of the big picture. And um kind of in line with that, just, yeah, uh, hearing some director's notes beforehand. Um, I don't need it to be a video necessarily of them kind of telling me exactly. I can give exactly. you some advice on this, Andrew. So always ask us who the director is. We will tell you, watch their reel. You will get their vibe. They all have reels and it's very helpful. If you have an audition for a campaign, unless they've done a dramatic change in agency, it's going to be the same creatives who've written it. Watch past auditions. You're going to get the world that commercial lives in. Read the script, even if you're SOC. We did one for a fish company, blah, blah, blah. It took place in the 1800s. Everyone was SOC. I guarantee 75% did not read the script because they were dressed yeah, like they yeah. were going to the club and stood yeah, like they were yeah. at a club. It will help you. And then, of course, if after all that, you're still like, I have no idea. Please, please email us. We will share with you all the knowledge we have to the best of our abilities. Or email your agent and ask your agent. Your yeah. agent can find it out for you. Definitely. Here's Steven's cell phone number. Call him directly. <laughs> <laughs> please don't, Bella. If you have to, it's yeah, okay. Uh, Bella? You're on mute. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Um, this is just taking it a step back to um, something that us agents do nowadays that is very time consuming that I think the actors don't fully understand. And that is with the influx of non-union commercials, we now have a huge um, accounting job to take care of. We have, to, we do, and it's not just little invoices anymore. You know, we used to do that. Like whenever somebody booked a, a union job, it was like, okay, great, booked. It's out of my head. It's going to be taken care of uh, by the union. But now it's so much work for us to uh, do the invoices, find out who we have to send the invoices to sometimes. Um, and the way that they're paying now is is not not just a check like sometimes right. they'll you don't like bitcoin pay. you're not a bitcoin fan <laughs> you don't bitcoin. like being paid in bitcoin uh, yeah i feel um, you i get it yeah it's 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 become 
a, an exceedingly big part of this job and you have to be really savvy. Like sometimes it's being paid from the States and they're paying in American dollars and then it gets exchanged to Canadian and they're, they're um, wire transferring you the funds. It's like, holy crap. Right. I mean, this is, this is, I've had to like learn this whole other way of dealing with it. Um, and it is time consuming. I talk about that all for 15% too. So when right. some agency fee comes along, 15% agency fee is attached to something that has um, a, a, a photo, uh, a part of it, um, you know, and actors don't understand what that 15% agency fee is. It's like, oh my God, somebody's got to pay us for this work. No, we understand that. We, we, we totally get that. I, I understand that. that. It's a lot of work and it's a lot of yeah, stress. And I just wanted, I just want the actors that are watching is, yeah. to understand that this is just another really, really big part of it that certainly wasn't around at the beginning. I get it. I know that. Yeah. But Bella, we, I, we, we, I say I won't, I won't give you your booking sheet until you give me billing info. So from us, she you does. always get it. I am aggressive as can be because I'll forget. So yeah. I need it instantaneous. Yeah. It, yeah. True. And you're great, Sarah. I mean, I, I have no issues with you at all, ever. <laughs> For that kind of stuff. It's just, it's, you're it's the only really one. amazing. It's just, <laughs> no, <laughs> I got issues. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just want the actors to realize that really our jobs are just massive. It, it, I, I agree. I think all of our jobs have changed and there's a lot more work and there's very, it's very few boundaries. Like we're working around the clock. It's nonstop and we're always trying to make others happy. And we are mm -hmm. sacrificing our own mental health, our own well-being. And it's, it's difficult, but we also, we did choose this and we do love this. And yes, I do wish it was easier. And yes, I am going to throw to Yannick. Oh, I was just going to circle back to the memorization part, because I think for uh, if you're uh, auditioning also for um, for film and television, there's a trend mm -hmm. coming up and it's been started in the US with the Casting Society um, of America. Um, and they now, and it's coming to Canada. It has started with some of the casting directors. Uh, on the breakdown, they actually write down no memorization required. So that's mm. something that's been uh, uh, addressed in the U.S. Uh, there by by the union, by SAG, SAG-AFTRA, and uh, the CSA, Casting Society it's of America. It's an AFTRA rule too, though, Yannick. We're not allowed to ask people to memorize anything. I know, but I'm talking about if you have a bigger audition, you know, in film and TV, you really are. I mean, some roles, it's a dis you're doing yourself a, you're not doing yourself a favor by not memorizing if there's if it's super emotional role of right course. where you looking at your at your at your sides is going to destroy the audition um but others other other auditions you know if you have, if you have four pages of text and you've got 12 24 hours to turn it around you know uh as long as you can find a comfort level between if it's teleprompter like it was suggested or even holding your sides. I mean, remember when you went in the room auditioning for um, film, film and TV, nobody blinked an eye if you were looking down at your sides from time to time, right? It, right. It, yeah, of course, memorization is better because you are more comfortable with the role and you can then perform, you, you know, you can transcend the emotions, right? It's easy, it's easier when you're not thinking about it. Um, but, but yeah, memorization is going away. And it's, it's like, it's just, unless, as I said, if you have to, sometimes you have to, you just have to. You've got this huge emotional crying scene, you, you know, it's gonna break the, it's gonna break the vibe, right? So it was just that good. And yes, Bella, invoicing for neon union work is <laughs> horrendous, 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 horrendous. And collecting the money is even worse. Um, yeah. It's like the invoice goes out, but when do we get paid? I don't know. Okay. Or it comes and, in electronically uh, and you have no idea yeah, who it's no idea. from. You don't know where it's from it's and you do, yes, it, and you're like doing calls and emails saying, okay, I've got this $1,500. Is it for client A or client B? Because I don't know. It just right. dropped in the bank. No idea. Right. Right. So, Can I make a point? Yes. I, I just want to mention to all the actors out there 
that when you are self-taping, remember that you want to present yourself in the best possible way because you want to win that job. So I don't want to see auditions. I know for me, I don't want to see auditions with people who have literally just gotten out of bed, you know, in their sweatshirts. They really haven't put in, put enough effort into their auditions because they're working from home now, because they're self-taping. This is a commercial. You want to sell yourself in the best yeah. possible light. Yeah. So try and memorize your lines if you can, or cut in between and do it in the editing process. Make sure your hair is done nice and <laughs> clean and fresh. That you're wearing <laughs> clothes that, that don't have rips in them. That your background isn't like a pile of chuchkas in the back that's distracting. I mean, keep all that in mind because really you're selling a product in your auditions. You want to be able to sell that product in your self-tape because yeah. you're the product. Yeah. So it's just Agreed. my little pointer there. Agreed. Nathan. Um, I wanted to ask, and it's and funny, then Kelly. <laughs> the hair thing, I feel like I lost an audition because my hair, I had the worst <laughs> hair possible. <laughs> but it happens. It was a one time. <laughs> Um, but I was curious, and a lot of people seem to be curious about this, on uh, sending in multiple takes for commercials or in film and TV in general. Sometimes I see it in the breakdown. It says, please send multiple takes. It's very encouraged. Um, but sometimes the audition just feels too long to actually want to include multiple takes. Sometimes you have like your one good take and you just want to get it out of the way and it's done and you know it's good. You don't want to like give them a different idea of something that might be bad or, or worse than your one take. Like you have a lot of ideas when it comes to sending multiple takes and whether they're all getting watched as well. I would, I, I would say, I, I would say lead with your best take. And if right. your second take shows some form of range, then damn it, include it. Like they're going to watch it. I mean, we're, we're going to watch it. And if they love you on the first take, they're going to check the second. And you're not going to be held accountable for tweaking or changing it. Like, it, it's all good. But sometimes it's they're super good. specific. They want one take, follow the instructions. For us, if we ask for multiple takes, especially for new people out there, if it looks like you recorded it once and uploaded it three times because they're giving us no variety, that's the first uh, sign for me that I should probably delete your take because you probably don't have the chops to carry a commercial. So just read the instructions and follow what the casting director wants. Unfortunately, there's no answer because every casting director and every job is different, but just right. follow what they ask for. Specifically, okay. this one job we just did, like I was writing all the self-tape notes and I was very detailed about tone and everything. So I was like following the, um, the treatment. And then the director just said, he's like, no, that's too specific. He's like, just let them do whatever they want. So <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> so in that case, that's what they want. They just want to see what you bring to it and they want options. So they want right. to like get a sense of what you're going to bring to this. Like, and they will like tailor it around you if you were the, the choice that they're going for. So right. yeah, sometimes it is very specific and sometimes it's completely broad. So multiple takes are always wonderful because yeah, you can try it. No doubt. This yeah. way and then this way, and then they can like one or the other and they can see that you have that range. And that's so But the right. last thing we want is a robot who's just doing the same thing over mm -hmm. and over, especially if there's kids listening or kids grown ups. We we uh, we need to see a little variety. Okay. I want to throw to Kelly and then I want to address something in the chat. Um, yeah, I it's so I think that just to go back a little bit about what I'm hearing from so many actors, I, first of all, I teach at the Toronto Film School. So I'm supposed to be able to tell all of my students what the industry's like right now <laughs> and what to expect. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's very difficult because things have been shifting so rapidly. And certainly I'm not a fortune teller. I can't determine where they're going, but I do know it's a new industry and, and things are not going back to, you know, the way they were. Um, but there are some things like we're all editors now. Um, you do have to, um, have the ability to, as you say, like, you know, sell your best product, like right. make things look good. You know, I, I taught over zoom and, 
um, still occasionally have to. And sometimes, you know, there is no setup. There's nothing going on behind them. And it it's it's a it's a shit show. Um, and I do wonder, like, you know, how many of those tapes are being submitted. I mean, this is these I, I know these are not self tapes that I'm watching, but I am asking everyone to set up as if they were going to and a lot of people just don't have that ability. Um, so, you know, I, I'm just wondering, are agents having to spend more time, more of their time with people who need the extra help? Um, and then, you know, the people who do know what they're doing and can make short films, you know, how are they, how are you as agents balancing all of that and representing mm -hmm. your clients? It's so much work. I mean, we really do recognize you're doing so much work. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, we're all having to be editors and make great self tapes. Some people are having to pay for their self tapes. Um, and I know there's so many points of view about this, like I used to have to drive and pay for parking and all that stuff, you know, so a self tape app can make it easier, but you have to pay for it. So I, I just want to make sure I bring these things up because it's yeah. not just us in the room. It's, you know, whoever else is out there. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's number of pages. I'm, I do more long form certainly now. So mm -hmm. sometimes there's a lot of pages and it's okay to say, just don't learn them or you don't need to learn your lines. And I'm I'm a pretty big teleprompter user now, but um, but very often there's an advantage to learning your lines. And so I think all of those things are just, there's no like correct equation. It's kind of like you have to find what works best for you. I think for that comes out with there trying to figure all of that out. It's like what's it's not necessarily this is the right thing. It's just what's right for you and get get to know that and and do right. it well. Right. It comes with experience and yeah. the amount of auditions you have and each one is going to be different. Also, there's so many workshops around that will train you how to do self tapes properly, how to prepare for them. There's a and your agent should be there to help you as well. If like and that goes back to having your communication open with your agent, you should be able to say, "Hey, look, you know what? I don't know if this is any good. Can you give me some feedback? Can, can you know, give me some direction?" And actors are also wondering, you know, should agents have self tape facilities oh, no. available? Right. I'm just saying these are things that come up. I hear you. Um, there was a time oh, that there no, were. Oh, no, no, no. Yes, well, yes, now, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, and that goes to your question about helping actors that need the help. And this is why I had raised my hand. Mm -hmm. um, because I won't lie to you. I don't treat all actors and all auditions the same way. Okay? Mm -hmm. So for a commercial, for example, there's some actors that I know they're going to nail it out of the park every time. Right. I've watched enough of their auditions. I know they have the ring light. I know they have the backdrop. I know the audition is going to be great. Surprise, everybody. I'm not watching those. I know they're good. Okay. I, 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 I'm not lying now. I just, I'm being honest, right? Okay. Now I have other actors that I'm, Either I'm starting to work with them and I don't know their work too well. I will watch absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. There's actors that, you know, I may have asked them to upload it to my portal, you know, uh, and they're having difficulties and I'm just going to be, that's fine. Just send it to me whichever way you'd like. I don't care. And, you know, I would like all my actors to follow my labeling protocols that I have set for my office. I'd love that, unless there's a, a specific labeling request that is coming from a specific casting director and how they like it. Mm -hmm. I have a standard labeling format so that I can find those auditions, you know, in my in my portal and know which project they're attached to. But if I have a performer that's having difficulty with this, even with the labeling part of it, let me know. Like I, I you know, if you're doing three self tapes and they all come back as movie one, movie two, movie three. Uh, could, could you just even send me an email and tell me which right. which one is which, right? Because mm -hmm. like, just say movie one is KFC, movie two is 
uh, is the, the the movie of the week. I'm trying, and movie three is West Jet, right? Right. And I'll figure it out, right? I will help and guide your hand in those situations. Um, and and then there's the project type. And as I said before, and I think it's super important. Like I'm paying more attention to a guest star role <laughs> or a series regular on TV that I'm going to pay attention to your SOC for McDonald's. I mean. You have to be realized. I have to prioritize, right? Like I, th there's a point where I don't, I can't hold your hand that much, right? right? And learn the tools. And you know, if there's a specific, you know, so if you're going to be auditioning, uploading to casting workbook because that's the way it's supposed to be uploaded, well, you have to be an actor that knows how to label the project because on the other side, nobody's going to have will interrupt in, in between, intercepted in between. Like, yes, I may have to go and approve the file so that the casting director can see it. But once you've uploaded it, I can't change the file. Right. So you think about it on the other side. Think about it for the casting director that receives an audition that says movie one. Wow. Okay. Now you're just bad form on, you know, on your part. Right? right. It's like when you used to go to an audition and you brought a picture and resume. Well, then think about labeling your file as your picture and resume. Right? right what's your name what's the project and what's the role think about it you know sure. so think about we down you know if casting i don't know on I've, I've seen versions of how it works on casting on you know for breakdown express for example i've had mm -hmm. the i've had some sessions with casting directors but so I, I have an idea of what it looks like right they receive the file as you've uploaded it whatever it says that's what they get yeah right so there's, it doesn't get relabeled, right? It's what it is, you know? So if you didn't label it properly, so your agent should, well, I have to relabel it for you when it comes for me, thank God. But if it's gone to a service where I don't have the option to relabel it for you, think about it. It's going in a sea of self tape, right? So you're right. giving someone else, you're making someone else job that's already long and more painful than it was you're making it an extra step that we don't need correct okay i want to i want to throw to sharon and then rabin and then i want to do some questions for the for the panel so um, sharon, my hand is up too Stephen. oh well, okay but you can call me <laughs> okay let's go to sharon first and then rabin and then i want to address some of these questions i I, there's so, been so many parts where I've like wanted to say things, but it, yeah. um, it's, you know, all great information. I think like as a producer who works primarily in commercials with directors mm -hmm. and agencies, like there's so much of this trickle effect that I know agents have expressed having so much extra work because of this process. And I would say that that's the same for everyone across the board yes. because directors yes. are having to spend hours and hours reviewing a unlimited what seems like unlimited amount of self tapes yeah. and then having to choose from like let's say 50 of them and bringing it to a realistic level where we could have a day's worth of casting and right. i've been in castings like and i'm sure everyone has in men's like from not you know 8 or 9 a.m until sometimes I've been in a casting till 11 p.m. 11.30, oh, I remember. Yeah. I mean, like, so oh, God, it's yeah. just like this, we're trying to be as good about this process on our end as we can as well. And I think sure. there are just limitations with Zoom castings and, and where it would be also in person anyway, you know, like, so I guess when it comes to like questions of like, how long should my tape be? How many takes should I have? Like, it, right. it's like use, your best judgment in terms of like knowing this information now as a mm -hmm. performer what yeah. you what you would feel you know what you would want to see like first and foremost you're like Stephen had said your best foot forward and then they can decide when to stop watching and i'm sure that not all agencies and directors are watching all of these tapes like through and through and spending all this time doing that but and then um one other aspect is too like during these auditions like commercials at least i will speak for commercials and i know this is going to sound really crass but a lot of the time it comes down to look which is not something you can control like so i wouldn't take it too hard also like in that sense right. that commercials like are very much about like 
the specific like ethnic you know it's like it comes down to those kinds of things yep, and it does. like it you just have to realize that as much as you feel like you've you nailed it and even if the director were like loving your self tape or loving your callback it's a difficult conversation once like we're you know in a closed room with the agency yes. and the client it's like everyone's just like reacting to what the clients might feel and it's it's really it's not you let's just say that like for performers i like yeah. i feel for you guys and then the one last thing i know this might be putting agents on the spot a little bit but i've had this sort of in my mind because as we know commercials it has moved into this world where it's all about diversity and every script is like we need you know it's like i've questioned myself whether we need to be more specific whether we need to be more open it's like you know and then of course like directors want to prioritize performance which is as an actor, that's like probably better than anything, but um, I'm sure there are a ton of new performers and new actors and and I've always sort of felt what are maybe the agents doing to help these performers who are entering the ring for the first time in this self tape world where you know they are also like by people that are BIPOC and like just you know may not have had this as like a traditional route before and now it's like steven's having to like find new people for us all the time and and there are people who have never auditioned before you know like how how oh, yeah. are those people being supported and like i you know i don't know it's like i would love to hear what the agents might be doing on that behalf in terms of like bipoc inclusivity and like helping new performers and and whatnot Well, um, <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah. Um, finding new clients is difficult in this current environment for some of us. So I'm not going to talk about the work environment. That's not where I'm, I don't want to talk about that, like the union versus non-union. But when you're looking at diversity, we, there's been, we, I, I so, yes, Sharon, there's this amazing, there's this amazing authenticity that we're search, searching for, right? This is where we're coming from, the authentic, authenticity. Um, and it, it's in various places. It's not just BIPOC, it's people with disability. May that be visible, minor, visible or not visible. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is a difficult road to navigate for agents when you're working with actors that are not really actors. So this is where there's a difference between the commercial world that you might be seeing versus the television and film world. Yeah. The television and film world, I'm not gonna take on a new client just because they're BIPOC. With That's no experience. Not, with no experience. That's just not yeah. gonna happen. Mm -hmm. um, some, some pool of, of agents, and I know not, not the ones that are on this panel today, uh, but there's other agents that will just you know, take on anybody because they need, they want the commercial work and they'll try anything. Um, so, and that's the reality, like they will take on anybody. Um, and, and I don't know how to do it. And the new faces and new play, you know, those, those type of people, I, I don't know. I personally don't know how they do it. I don't know how they get the help they need to get the job. Um, but one of the things that you were saying, and this is why I want to jump in, you were asking, should we be more specific? You know, you're saying BIPOC. You're saying, yeah. And I have to say, sometimes it is a bit, it is a bit, it feels like you're throwing things at the wall and you don't really mean it, right? It's like, do, does, is, 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 is it the new requirement? And, and I'm going to say this, and this is a criticism for the, commercial industry, I have to say. I'm talking right. specifically about people about uh, actors with disability. Yep. Often there's just a tagline at the end and a new category. Oh, and any actor with disability from the age of 20 and 80. They're not included in the reg uh, in the breakdown itself. They're not included in the script. There's it's just like it seems and it feels like it's just talk. It's like, oh, and who's in a wheelchair who's a short person who's, who's a person 
with the federal policy. Just show me, right? And it doesn't feel like, that doesn't feel authentic to me. It feels completely like fake. Like somebody just added that at the end. And it's literally on the breakdown, a separate category. So you've got six characters, mom, dad, grandpa, uncle, clerk at the store, right. bank teller. They each have a role, right? right? But the person with disability has no role. It's just, just show me who you have. And I find that disrespectful. Sorry, I just had to think. No, that. I understand. And, and, and I'm trying to bring it into BIPOC conversation as yeah. well. Sometimes when you just have, have this breakdown, this is BIPOC because it feels like what you should write. It, it, sometimes it's clear you want, a person, you want South Asian actors. Great. Right. That's clear. That's what you want. Right? Sometimes you want African Americans, Latinx. Great. Let us know what you want. But and I ask you something. everything at you. Yeah. So here's the thing like, I I'm totally hearing you, but haven't we seen like a real change in the specs that we are given as casting directors? I know that we have seen a tremendous change in what we are casting now. Isn't that's a good thing? No. I mean, oh, it's it, a good thing. It's a right? very good thing. It's just, I don't want everybody, I don't want anybody from the producing side and the ad firm side think that they've done, they finished doing the work. There's more work to be done. And I'm not speaking on behalf of BIPOC people because I'm obviously not. You're right? not? But, well, not anymore. I mean, I, 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 I hear you. Work, yeah. And then I like did an ancestry.ca or something. <laughs> so, um, but I am from the LGBTQ community. And then we right. get those words thrown around as well. Right. And then we get the actors that are like, oh, really would like an LGBTQ couple. Well, I have LGBTQ couple. And then you see right. the ads and they were not really interested in LGBTQ couple. It was just right. an option, which is good. That's fine. So I'm talking about all of these. It's like, be, if you can be specific about what you want, we're going to give you what you want, right? right. But the more gen generic it is, we'll just give you anything. Right. But yes, the work is moving forward in the right direction. I applaud that. It is good. It is Great. good. But yeah. the work isn't finished. That's not even like, close. I mean, I mean, I, 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 I'm a guest speaker at so many different type of minority conferences, right? So like from the LGBTQ community, I've been brought in with the um, actors with disabilities to be part of forums and stuff, so, you know, and it's just putting it on paper that they're welcome to audition is what it feels like. Right? I understand and, what you're saying, but they're also booking the jobs. Yes. Yes. Some right. It's Which is like a seismic shift from like when we came up, Yannick, like going back 20, 25 years ago, like it's insane. Like it's such a, it's such a massive change. And I, I think, you know, we should celebrate a little bit that it's a good thing. No, no, I started right? with a good thing. I just, said, I know you I did. I know you did. It. There's some of these that like, just don't sit on your laurels, anybody in the creative world. That's I what it. I mean. Like it's it, like, maybe it is every role is open to any ethnicity and, and it is open to any abilities. They're doing right. that in some time in television. Right. Um, but it's not always genuine either. Is it just on paper, right? So, you know, just- Yeah, so can we don't... put that to casting then? Can we say like, unless you say open to BIPOC or BIPOC strongly encouraged, do you find the majority of agents are just submitting Caucasians or able-bodied no. unless- Okay, so yeah, no. so we are getting somewhere so that it is a good thing. Yeah, absolutely it's a good thing. I mean, gosh, I mean, I've cast 10,000 spots in my life. I mean, I have reference to like 15, 20 years ago, things have changed. I think it's positive. I think we are moving in the right direction. I think I, I hear what Yannick is saying. And I've also heard other people this week speak on it. Made me feeling it's not as authentic but it's happening and that's authenticity to me. And I think it's going to move forward and I think we're gonna all gain a better understanding of it. Yeah, and Sharon, it's wonderful. for you, I think most agents, I, I think 
um, the majority of recruiting that's going on is specifically looking for BIPOC and differently abled right now. It definitely is on my end. To, to be honest, today was the mm -hmm. first time I've met with a white actor in, in <laughs> probably a year. Um, and then I guess it depends on the agency. Like for me, for everybody I take on, because I rep children and teens, everybody gets a full half hour self-training uh, tutorial from me specifically to help them break into the commercial world. So I think it's agency specific. And maybe those are questions mm -hmm. that actors who are newcomers should ask when they're interviewing with agents is, is how specifically do we get started without having experience? And right. maybe yeah. I mean, like, 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 you know, like, et cetera. Yeah, Jackie, like, but, you know, when you get this 45 years old person who's BIPOC and decides, oh, I should do commercials today, it's really hard, you know, to, to say, oh, okay, right? Like, but from from a youth perspective, obviously, oh, that, that's, they have to start somewhere, right? It's like, I'm thinking of the older categories where it's like, how do you train a banker to become a commercial actor, right? Like, what do you do? Like, yeah. okay, you're a banker who wants us to do sidelines as commercial, right? As a hobby. <clears throat> but I don't think but, yes, yeah. but somebody that does commercials, right? Like, I'm not talking about long format and scripts. It's like, it's your energy. Clients are attracted to your energy, your persona, how, what you give off. And, and to be honest, like, I, I'm not taking away there are certain scripts that really require timing, but a lot of the stuff, it's like, are you comfortable in your own skin? We are booking so many real people. And as you know, we're doing a lot of non-union work. We're posting we'll on that. we're posting on social media. We're finding a lot of new faces and a lot of new people that they don't need to be classically trained. They they are not as committed as you guys. They don't have the experience and the training of you guys, but they're comfortable on Zoom and just being themselves. And I've always said, like with commercials sometimes less is more like it's not when you're drinking a cup of coffee or you're reacting to something bizarre happening to your left we don't need uh, like this shakespearean actor we need you to just listen and just nail it nail that beat it's a 15 or it's a 30 we're looking for a beat that's it and if you watch the spots and and i always encourage my friends watch commercials there's like a moment it's a reaction, it's 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 something, but it's not what what y'all are doing for long format with scripts. That's performing. I'm not saying that what we do isn't performing, but it it's it's not as difficult. And I feel I feel that those who get it really get it. Sarah, Sarah, but okay, Sarah, will you moderate? Will you moderate for two minutes while I go? You can go to the bathroom. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. Just thank you. My, my time is limited, blah, blah, five-year-olds will all have to do bedtime soon. But I just want to say these things if you get nothing from me. We appreciate you. We love you. We have nothing but respect for agents, our directors, our actors. Like, I know how hard you're all working. We are beyond grateful. You are editors. You are sound designers. You're doing all these things you never thought of. Any parents out there, you probably never thought you'd be directing your children. You probably never thought you'd be the reader. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. You've made our life easy. To the agents. You get C-mails from us all day, every day. You get auditions from us. You get everything. You know, I'm up, if I go to the bathroom at three in the morning, I'm sending out emails. Um, I wake up at 5.30 so I can run at eight. You're getting C-mails from me. Please, 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 I respect your hours. Do not look at them until you start your workday, whatever that means to you. We tell our clients, you know, it's only going to be posted at 10 a.m. I lie to my clients. Sorry, clients who are listening. I say we can't possibly post anything on the weekends we can't upload on the weekends sorry it's a bit bit wild here um but um please know i have nothing but respect for you you work within your hours do not look at our emails all the time um and we love you like the whole point of tonight when stephen was said he wanted to do that was just to just so you all know how much we respect you and how hard you're working so please know that that's the purpose of this um and that we are so grateful that we could all be in this together because that's what it's about I'm literally in a kindergarten party. Um, but that's all I have to say about that. Stephen Staub probably still peeing and I am no good at moderating. So uh, uh, if you feel help. comfortable- Sarah, You're good at everything, Sarah. <laughs> I'm not just, good at most. 
Sarah, Sarah, can I just say something quick? We don't have the time to, to elaborate. I just want to throw it out there, this inclusion, because nobody, because we a country of immigrants and accents should be included. Because if we look, it, I have a friend, Shakespeare trained actor, can't get an audition hardly. It's not so much about commercials, more about TV, I guess. But how can we address in the future that we, portray our country and the US how it actually is. And, and not like how Hollywood taught us wrong, like everybody thinks the Lone Ranger is a white dude because every movie and TV series, it's a white dude acting as a Lone Ranger and he's a black guy, you know? So how can we portray how Canada really is um, with the accents included? You know, but how you I put- I think Africa has people. started like a committee yes. about accents. So that's really helpful. Yes. I yes. know all of our clients now, we, we are seeing more open to this, more open to that. Honestly, okay. it seems like in our jobs, and I cannot speak for anything except for what we cast, they are looking for the best actor. So if that actor yes. happens to have an accent and they're the best actor, awesome. You that know, would be great. If that actor happens yes. to be in a wheelchair, awesome. Like it's the best actor. So yes. we're always open to everything. Yes, that, that would be a goal for everybody. I would love that. Thank you, Sarah. That would be- You're Stephen to take over because I'm no good at this, but I love you all. Oh, you're great at this. Content. You're great at this. I want to give Rabin and I want to give Andrew their chance. And then I want to get to some questions and answers. And there's one question that I really want to address for all of us. So Rabin, you lead off first. Okay, just one quick add thing to what Yannick had said. Yeah. Um, as a BIPOC actor, going into commercials, yeah. Le it's just been the past two plus years yeah. that you actually felt that you were actually had a chance of actually booking the role for commercials yeah. and right across the board. Yeah. And it yeah. did feel very disheartening going into an audition because you'd be like, oh, yep, yeah, that person, because you saw the regulars, the Caucasian actors that you knew for sure that they were going to book. And it is I understand now it's a lot to happen for change to happen. It is happening, especially in, in you can notice it in the American commercials and the Canadian commercials. Nearly fell down when I saw a mixed couple in Chopper's Drug Mart uh, on yeah. the poster. I was like, change is actually happening. It is. Um, so it is happening. It is a lot for, and I've been in a casting session where it really is a lottery because you've heard the client say this, and then the director wants this, but then this and then the whatever. My two notes is community and communication is what we've lost in the last three years. Yes. The community of actors being able to see each other in the room, in the audition room and be like, hey, let's go for coffee. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. We've been disconnected. And that's one of the things we have to work on. Yes. Be a reader, just like Darren had offered, like, hey, he's a single person living at home. Have another, we all know somebody else who's in the industry. Yes. We all know somebody else who's in the industry who could be a reader yes. and be like, hey, can I send you this self-tape? And honestly, we also have to take the 85% of your agent is doing 15. You've chosen to be an actor. Yes. Do the work. Get up and do your hair and your makeup and yeah. take the time to learn. If you chose to be in this industry, yeah. the same yeah. way your agents are working like almost 24-7, you also have to prep. You have to figure out how is this as regarding to watching commercials and things like that. So we have to take the onus as actors for the 85% that we are earning. We have to do the job. Stop being lazy. It's three years in. Like there's so much information out there. There's so much access that how are you going to get a fighting chance if the cat's walking by in the background or <laughs> your lighting's not good? Like there's no excuses. That's just where I'm saying right now, we have to help our agents, agents help us and it's communication and community. Thank you. Okay, Andrew, and then I wanna to get to some questions on this one I really wanna address so badly. Andrew, yeah, speak. I, I was just, uh, I guess, going back to the, the idea of people being turned down for their looks. And I know that's been, you know, a problem for ages, um, but I guess it's a question of like, is it possible to possibly stagger castings for parallel roles where people are supposed to look similar so that you can kind of not request certain actors based on their headshots because you already know that the sister looks like this? 
you know, um, rather than casting the brother and the sister at the same time and then being like, oh, well, we like the brother for this one. So let's disregard all the sisters that look different than him, you know? I'm I'm confused by that. Yeah, Can you I explain? Think, I think, Andrew, what you're trying to say is like, like, we don't know that until we're in callbacks and until like, and sometimes the families build from whoever like the main role is and then we build around that or whoever like the favorite is and then we build around that like oh, we never know so we like it's always a wide net because we have no idea what the parents will look like and what kind of children they can create and what you know and it's, mm -hmm. there's so many factors to that and it's like we we have no idea what we're not going to not call you back because of there's no ideas made prior to the end of the callback. Right. Basically. Okay. I, Steve, can I just add something to? Yes, like, please. Yes, I please. Think it was, um, Sharon's uh, question about bringing in new talent and how we manage it. Um, yeah. Our agency, we do take on new talent. Um, we don't take anybody. I mean, we have to see a potential in them. And how we manage is, is you know, we made the decision to take that time to help coach them. Um, not to the extent of, of, you know, an acting coach, but help them work through doing their self tapes and what they need to do. Um, and then guiding them on best, you know, um, uh, acting classes and acting schools. Um, but there's, we feel there's so much talent out there that, that are having a hard time getting into the industry that we want to give them an opportunity. So we, we do take a chance and often it works out. Um, but again, I mean, I've declined to accept people if they don't have that potential and they don't have that passion and the willingness to put in the work. Right. So for, for us, it is there. It takes a lot of time and we work hours and hours um, on the weekends constantly, like most other agents. Um, but that's what we like to do. So um, that's worked for us. Thank you. I want to address, I want to start doing some questions because I know that we're two hours and six minutes in, but here's something that I've, I've been stuck on since 7.32. And that is, hi, should we circle back and discuss boundaries, quick turnarounds, and an issue with not respecting office hours? Now, this one's really personal to me because, God, we are all doing so much for so much longer. And what the fuck are, sorry if there's parents and kids, but what the fuck are office hours? I've never worked office hours. I totally understand that we are all experiencing a lack of boundaries from top to bottom. And I need you to understand that we, from a casting perspective, and I need Sarah and Ashley on camera with me, please. Here we are. Okay. I need to express to you guys from the bottom of my heart, we are struggling with the same thing and we are doing everything we can. And to be completely transparent, one of the things that, that promoted, that prompted me to start this web forum again was I saw an anonymous posting that was speaking about casting, about, you know, we need to stand up and get a backbone and speak up on our clients so that you know, we're not forcing agents to work on their personal time. And then I Googled personal time and I saw people on water slides and it looked really fun. And I would love to experience that. But what the fuck is personal time? Agents, actors, casting, what the fuck is personal time? But Stephen, we do say with recalls, and even if it's a Vancouver client, an LA client, we need recalls by 5.30 to lock them in. Because you, we like it when we've sent out your recalls, it takes me two hours to organize all the info sheets, do all the time changes, check on conflicts, all that. And we don't have staff that works till midnight. So, like, I lose my assistant at six, and then it's me. So, um, listen, we're we, 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 listen, I just want you guys to know from the bottom of our hearts, we are so aware and we are as affected by this as you are. And we are really trying to establish boundaries. Sarah, I see she'll email clients, guys, agents are off the clock at six. And we say that, but we know you're not. You know, like, honest to God, guys, last night at 9.45, I was prepping a job. There are no boundaries, but we are, honest to God, trying to establish them. 
We are trying to get you the material to give you as much time as possible. We don't want to reach out to you on Sunday night for a recall on Monday. I swear we don't. And the only but reason that ever happens is if we don't do that on the weekends is your clients for like May Day, let's say, which we're all talking about, um, they will have less than 24 hours by the time we get the sides to the time we'd send it to the director to the time we give it to you. So it just doesn't seem fair to the actor. So yes, it's a shit show and we know it. And that's why we write we're sorry on our breakdown and respect if you don't feel comfortable, don't submit. Like we totally get it, but there's just nothing we can do. Well, let me just say, Sarah, that I know on behalf of both of us that we are definitely trying. We are definitely trying to get things in a timely manner. And, oh God, do you think I like working at 10, 11 o'clock? I don't, but this was my choice. I understand that things are a little bit cray cray right now. I am really trying to establish boundaries. Ashley's up late, Dan, Sarah, my whole team, you guys are. And if we send something out, Sarah, pop back on, get back on, Sarah, get back on. So I, 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 yeah, I, I, I exercise, I mean, barely, but like I go to a, a class at eight o'clock in the morning at my gym and I try to go to spin three times a week at six. And I got asked yesterday, are you an on-call doctor? You're always having to answer your cell phone and hide in the supply closet. I'm like, no, sorry, it's just a French fry emergency. Like it is nonstop. It doesn't matter if I'm in a class at eight, 100% my phone rings three times. And it doesn't matter if I'm trying to exercise at seven, somebody will call me and I will jump off my bike. It's just the way it is. And it, but we're trying. I, I think I, it's I, the I, same I, way for agents too. Totally, but I, I, I pledged you as a casting house, we are really, trying to establish those boundaries because we're tired. We're really tired and we, we want to have those boundaries and we want, we want it to be more civilized, but office hours in this industry, like office hours and no disrespect to the question. I'm in 25 years, office hours? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> it Nathan? seems crazy. I, I wanted to add as an actor, from that viewpoint, office hours don't seem like a thing. You don't have the time. If you're an actor, you're working to make your rent. You're working to make your bills. You're work if you have kids, you're working to make sure your kids are fed and bring and brought to other places. But you know you're also an actor. And you have these responsibilities when your agent gets you that audition that they worked hard for to get you. And I'm the straight they did is waiting for the self tape to come in and you wanna get it in on time at minimum. You have to know that this is your decision. This is the industry that you came into and this is part of the job. You don't just put it off because this isn't the time I'm in the office. This, this is not how it works. I've gone from working background to my job to, to 12 hour days to having three auditions, one for a series lead, one for a commercial, one for a guest star, all different mediums. And I know I have to get these auditions in. The, it doesn't make sense to think about this industry with an office hours mentality. You Honestly, have to, it, we, hasn't we are, really, it hasn't really changed over the last 35 years. Well, Lisa, because, I, gotta, I gotta say something, honey. I gotta be, I gotta honest. be honest. Like. There, there is a lack of boundaries for all of us and it has gotten a little bit out of control. And, you know, there's no need for me to be answering or quoting jobs on a Sunday night at 9.45, but that's my livelihood. I'll do it. But I, I, honest to God, we are pushing back a little bit more now and we're trying to create a more <laughs> civilized industry but it's never going to be nine to five and I totally feel your pain and I totally get it and it's exhausting and it's stressful when you're in bed and you go up to to go to the washroom and you check your email and you're getting like an audition or a request or will he cut his hair will he shave like it's insane but I can't change the whole game it's the industry it's the there industry. was there was a time yes. where uh, in faxes time um, <laughs> <laughs> when actors knew that you did not call your agent between 
certain time and certain time because they were putting their faxes together and they had to get them to the courier to get it to the casting director at a certain time. Actors knew that those hours you'd never called your agent. If you did, you got a black mark beside your name. Right. Um, and nowadays it feels like everyone can call anybody anytime. And I would suggest that that shouldn't be the case, that maybe agents have certain times that actors are allowed to ask for help or call, to put boundaries on it. I'm suggesting it for your welfare. I'm not, I'm saying that, there, that we have to start looking out for each other. Totally. And, not, and instead of us, because of course you all are wonderful people and you all want to work hard for what you're doing and you all want to do everything, but we have to say, let's take care of each other and let's not bombard everybody and know that the, the top, going top to bottom, it's not that we're on the bottom, we are a very important part but that we should have, there should be bound. We have to start setting boundaries for each other. I'm trying, and and to be honest, to, to all our actors and 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 our agents, like if you feel so like overly, not, I don't know if it's overly compromised or it's unfair, then don't fucking do it. Because at the end of the day, Sarah and Ashley and I, we always say like, guys, agents are clocking out at six o'clock. Although six o'clock is early. Like, I mean, six o'clock is a piece of cake. <laughs> it's when we get to like nine and 10 and 11 where we're still working. If you wish to decline, you will not be punished. We get it. We don't want to do it either. Panic. Well, um, you can hear me? Yeah. Um, okay. So there's also boundaries and priorities. So I will actually take Stephen's call at 9 p.m. But I'm probably not going to take my client's call at 9 p.m. Unless you just got in a car crash <laughs> or, you missed, or, or you missed your flight for the commercial shooting in Mexico, right? I'm not going to have a career chat at 9 p.m. Right. And if you want to have a career chat, don't just call cold me on it. That's just not me. Please don't. Let's make a meeting about it, right? Now it's like with my clients, it's like I've started it. It's just say, I'm like, okay, you want to chat? Here's my calendar. Pick 30 minutes. Let me know when, right? Like this is my block of time every day that I have. I've got 30 minute increments, pick. And I'm available then. Now, I'm also, now we're in the world of, ch of text. That's more intrusive than the call, if you want to know the truth, because that never stops. Because you answer one text, and then you answer the other, and it keeps going, and it keeps going. So really, from an actor perspective, think about it as your age. Think about it from your agent's mind. Even though we don't clock out at 6 o'clock, just assume we are. Pretend we are, okay? We'll still send you auditions between 6 and 10 or 11, whenever they come through, we'll send them out. But, you know, just imagine that's a robot AI that's sending those after six o'clock. Just think about it that way. We're just not but, there anymore. But you don't have to send them out. Like if Sarah and I send them out at 11 o'clock and you still have, and we really lobby for like- oh, 40... wait, Okay, I, I am not always sending them at 11 o'clock. I'm just sure. saying for the, for the actor, just, if, if you're trying to establish, if you, if you were talking about boundaries, boundaries, personal life, what is a personal life? We don't have one anymore, right? No. So it's, it's the way it is. Lisa, said, Lisa mentioned it. It's always been like, this is just heightened now. It's even worse than it always was. Right. But from an actor perspective, in working with your agent, work, you know, just pretend we're not there after six. Try, just try that. Give it a shot. Pretend we're only in the office from one to six, because in the morning we were, we're doing packages and picture and resume that have to be dropped off by 12.45, right? Just, just give it a shot for a month. Imagine that we're not there available. Imagine that we're just available from one to six. The world won't stop, right? But it but might give us some reading room as an agent. Because we're focusing on getting you auditions. Remember that? That's, right. that's like, that, that's, that's, that's what we are doing most of the day. 
so, so just to follow up to the last question, it's, and this is in the chat, the last couple of years we were getting tapes from casting after six o'clock for tapes due the next day. Do we need to send them out actually? And what I would say is you do you. Honest to God, you do you. I mean, we're standing by. I don't need to drag you into this pit of hell that we live, but you do you. And I got to tell you something, guys, like if if I'm sending something out at six, I don't remember sending something out at six o'clock due the next day. Where's my Sarah? Sarah, pop on. That's not how we roll, right? Where's Sarah? That that would be that would be like it's an emergency, emergency. We An emergency. But I don't think we've ever done that much. That that seems that's a bit crazy. But like, guys, I just want you all to know, actors and agents, that if you if you feel it's unfair and if you want, listen, you do you. We're still you're not going to be punished. We get it. We are struggling and going through the same shit that you're going through. And we don't want to send auditions out at six o'clock for the next day. And I don't think we do a lot because we usually like to really lobby for 20, well, 48 hours is like my minimum when I say to clients. But if you don't want to do it, then don't. There's no punishment. There's no repercussions. I get it. Sarah gets it. Ashley gets it. Dan gets it. We understand. It's a lot. Because I don't know, you could be out for dinner. You could be having a conversation with your partner. Like life happens and our life shouldn't just be work. I mean, for me, it's always going to be, but I'm not expecting you to do that. I just want to be fair. And I want you to know that, like, make your own decisions. If, if our boundaries don't suit yours and you want to step up and not submit that tape, I swear to God, you will not be punished. We get it. We get it. Straight up. I would say my wish list as an agent I would love, love, love if we're going to stay with first round casting for commercials on self tapes is to, if you guys could push your darned hardest for Tuesday deadlines instead. And I know it's been brought up before, but it's like, so agents, we, because of Vancouver and LA, right. We get, right. Uh, we get self tapes sent until about 11 o'clock on Friday nights. And then, so that means Saturdays, the actors are getting them asking questions all Saturday. And then a lot of agents are making them do Sunday. Um, especially for kids and teens, because we don't have the luxury of, of retaping on a Sunday morning. The kids are off to school, the parents are off to work. So uh, just like, again, I chose this job. I've been a gig worker my entire yep. life. So I'm going to roll with it, but it's just what about Friday noon? deadlines what are about especially noon on hard. Monday? Oh, what about noon on Monday? Like yeah. every client asks us for, for like, they're either like, we'd like it Friday morning. I'm like, let's give the talent the weekend. So I don't think that like on, on for our jobs, I can't imagine us pivoting from Mondays. Mm. But what if we say, can we have till noon, not 10 a.m.? I mean, maybe you it's just it's the volume. Call. It's not just what you guys send out. Like we get no. we get eight trillion auditions on Friday. So I might get something at a reasonable time, like two o'clock on a Friday afternoon. But that's in the queue that I've had so many. And then my kids come home from school and I walk the dog, et cetera, that I don't have time to send that out until 8 p.m. So actors aren't, but again, I have a different situation, right? I have minors. And so it's always a shorter deadline for minors. It's got to come in on Sunday because there's no choice. But I mean, for adult rosters, I'm sure that extra two hours would help a lot of agents have less crazier mornings for sure. Yeah, I mean, all our kids stuff, we have to get them Sunday night, right, Jackie? Like it's, there's no choice. We don't. Like if you want a 10, if you have a 10 a.m. deadline for anything with a kid on Monday, we have to give them the deadline of 8 p.m. on Sunday, right? It's like at the very, very max, right? That they can't pass that. Um, so if, if you have children in the commercial, if you move your if you move your deadline to 12 o'clock, it doesn't help the kids, the, the, the agents that represent children. But and it we does need an help. hour to process videos too. So if we tell our yeah. our clients 12, I can't send a link to one because I will watch them in real yeah, time, but I have to watch exactly. The, the trickle yeah it's it's yeah. um we will try how does that sound i i totally yeah. hear i mean if, if, you, if, you, if you try totally for 12 will. it's gonna help a lot of people we'll try help our children roster yeah well tuesday would be amazing but let's not like 
be completely <laughs> mad. It's my wish list. Just maybe within a year, if we could get more Tuesdays in general from everyone, I would be. Lisa I Burke be said, thrilled. "Get us, get us agency fees." And Lisa Burke, do you notice on all but one job, the like nine jobs we've posted that are non-union, they all have agency fees? Thanks to you, we've got real aggressive. So we can be aggressive. Lisa, you need a, some close captioning because, or, oh. or unmute yourself. I'm so appreciative of that, that I've noticed that you've added 15% on some, on the breakdowns that you can add the 15%. For sure. It, it's wonderful. And you know what? It just makes my work feel much more worthwhile. And validated. And if, listen, guys, everybody here, at the end of the day, we're in this together and we are all struggling and we are all frustrated and we are all tired. And I swear to God, this too shall pass. Things, uh, I mean, I, I miss the old dysfunctional normal. Like things are crazy right now, but I promise things are gonna get better. And we are like, one thing I was speaking to Sarah about and I've spoken to so many people this week. It's like, we are a relationship driven business. We don't talk anymore. Lisa Burke, the last time I spoke to you before <laughs> this week was three years ago when we were all locked down and drunk at like, you know, 9 a.m. You know, and like- you took a screenshot of that, I could kill I you. I did. <laughs> but I think that we should like, listen, let's, let's take that whole power play bullshit of casting age and actor. We are all friends. We are all community. If you have a question, reach out. If you have a concern, reach out. Like at the end of the day, we're doing this together. And it's really important to me that we all feel as part of a team and we don't punish, we don't, we don't do that shit. We, we can't do this without everybody that's here. Actors and agents, our lives are nothing without you and vice versa. We need to create more harmony and more open dialogue. And for all the actors that miss that connection in studio. I got to tell you something. So do we. So do we. I mean, I've been paying for a studio. I'm still on Logan. I've had it, you know, I just renewed my lease. I've been there four times in five years or three years, but things are going to get better. I promise. Let's not lose track of why we're here and what we're passionate about and to stick together. I mean, that's really what's the most important message of this, that, that we can have open dialogue, we can talk, we can share, you can reach out. And for like, listen, I spoke to Yannick this week. I haven't spoken to Yannick in years. And like, I really- Yes, but that's Sarah's fault. She keeps calling. <laughs> it, it's, it, it's, it's everybody's fault. Like we don't, we, we text, we email, but let's try to find some time to be like, yo, you good? What's going on? Because, you know, I think that's a really important component of our industry. I saw Bella at Sarah's son's birthday. I haven't seen her in years. I spoke to Adriana today or, or this week. I spoke to Rick. Like, we, we can't lose sight of that we are all in this together and that we need to maintain these relationships. We can't call each other all the time, but shit, we used to speak to each other every day. Every day we spoke to each other. We haven't spoken to each other in years. So everyone, here is Stephen's cell phone number. He'd love to chat. <laughs> it's it. it. uh, <laughs> Just joking. I'm falling asleep. It's my bedtime. I know. Okay, no, I, go, well, I got to go put Henry to bed or I'm okay, going to so let, let's, the, Okay, so uh, for here. those who are watching, this is not the last time we're going to do this. I felt this was really productive and helpful and, and I feel nourished uh, emotionally. And uh, I would like to do this again, and I would like to be more organized as I plan it. It was a really last minute thing, but I really appreciate all of you. And thank you for your thoughts and your opinions and your words. And let's stay in touch, all of us. And what about I... an in-person party with an ice cream truck? Could that Fine. be fun? Okay. I mean, yes. I just, listen, guys, I promise you this too shall pass. I know that we've got, a, the climate is hot out there. I understand what's going on. I'm not, a, I, I get it. I promise you, it, it can't get worse. It can only get better and it will. And I, and, and I love you and I respect you, all of you. And I couldn't do this without you. And you couldn't do this without me. And I am a human and you're a human. Pick up a phone, call Sarah Sheps direct. And uh, 
I really appreciate all of you uh, joining us tonight. And I know it's been a little bit longer, but I would love to do this on a monthly basis even. I think this is really healthy for all of us to, to just talk. Like, and, and a shout out anymore. to Mark Andrada, who oh, knows God, how to yeah. use the technical yes. world and organize this all. And he's Thank he's a superhero you. and we love him. So we're so grateful. Um, and to all of you, yes, we are so, we love you all. We are so grateful that you are part Me of our too. world. And we will keep supporting you and do our very best to make this world and this industry a better place. And, and we will do this again, and you're all welcome to join. And I feel like the only thing we missed out because we had so much to talk about because we haven't spoken is we didn't really address the questions and answers, which we'll do next time. But thank you. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you for thank all the you. viewers. And and I love you all. And and God, you're all so important to me for oh. for so many reasons. And, and cry, thank you. cry, cry. <laughs> no, I cr I've cried enough this week. I've cried I know he so cried much. three times today, like talking to you guys on the phone. He kept messaging me. He's like, I'm crying again. Oh. He said, Save it for the Zoom. <laughs> Save it for the Zoom. Thank it's you so much. Thank, thank, thank you, guys. Wonderful. Thank you, Mark. Thank everyone. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. And everybody for putting it thank together. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank, you. Us. Thank, thank you, everyone. Have a good Just night. Keep the community alive. <laughs> no doubt. Thank you. Oh, music. <laughs> oh. You Thank got you, Steven. a friend in me. Thank you all so much. You got a friend in me. I think that was really, I think that was great. I think we should do this <laughs> once a month. I think it's important. I really do like just listening. What a concept. I know. What a fucking concept of listening to each other and sharing and talking because we're all fucked. <laughs> <laughs>